fan of sport. Mike, you are a... I, I would call you a sports yeah. fan. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I watch more than just my individual teams. Not only do you watch more than indiv- your individual teams, if, uh, if I can recall your basement, your basement has memorabilia around it. <laughs> yeah, it's got some different stuff here. You know, you've, uh, you've gone far beyond just watching it on the tube. You know, you own shirts. You have a hat. Oh, yeah. Jerseys. Jerseys. <laughs> uh, Pictures. Miniature yeah. trophy replicas. replicas. Little replica trophies. McDonald's type. Uh, <laughs> Got the whole set from back in the day. The one with all the one. Do you, are you talking about the one that had like the Stanley Cup? And then the all Norris, the Vesna, all those ones. Yeah. I've got that same thing too. Yeah, it's probably uh, a collector's item now. Probably, it's it's. I'll it, never. Sell. It's hanging in a shelf above uh, the door at my mom's place. I can only assume it's still <laughs> there because they wouldn't have moved it. You know, like it's still. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of like the guest room, but they didn't really have a reason <laughs> to like throw anything away or anything like that. I can recall. Yeah, and it's not like it's tacky. It's nice. It's not really tacky. You know, anything and anything Vesna on it. You know, given my uh, familial tie to the trophy. <laughs> Anything with Vesna on it is a keeper. There you go. Yeah, literally a keeper. Literally. <laughs> the position. Oh, that's uh, why we keep you around, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we keep you around. Yes, sports. Sports, sports, sports are great, though. though. Gotta, Gotta love sports. sports. <laughs> I, can, I think I can watch any sport if it really comes down to. And uh, even ones that I don't know nothing about. A part of and part of checking out the sports that you know nothing about is the fun of learning what the heck it is all about. Yeah, yeah. Like, like Olympics. Olympics. You know, I'd never watch, watch badminton, badminton, but the Olympics come around. around. You you know, I can watch a good match of badminton. Of course, I would <laughs> never watch shot put. Exactly. Uh, but if a Canadian's in the finals, you're like, hey man, let's see what this guy can for do. For three years and eleven months, I don't give a crap about shot put. <laughs> uh, yeah. But there's that one month every four years, and I'm I'm locked in. I'm locked into the javelin. Oh, you like the javelin, eh? Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a race. I like the, uh, I th- I'll call me old fashioned. I like the well, old. Why'd you say I like javelin? The, I like the 100s. Well, that's, well, that's the main event. And your 200s. That's... That, that is the main, that is the main event. Yeah. That is your heavyweight bout of for the this, summer as, Olympics. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, like the, the ice hockey, hockey for the winter, winter you got your 100 meter for the summer. I'm, 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 I'm thankful that you said ice hockey there because uh, well, some the of, Americans need to know. Some of the American listeners might have been a little confused, yeah. and they're saying, "What do you mean hockey?" I think uh, they do. Don't they have like floor hockey in the summer or something like that? They could have, uh, uh, yeah, field hockey. They could field have. hockey. Maybe that's what. I'm it was. Not entirely sure. I don't know. I feel like they got some. Doesn't matter. They come and go. They change sports. Golf was in at one point, or it's back. I don't know. Yeah, and like baseball you know, and now was they in. have like snowboarding and skateboarding is in there now. Skateboarding made it in. I th- I think so. Didn't Sha- okay. isn't that what Sean White's doing, or is he doing both? He does both. He does He's both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know he won a gold for snowboarding, but uh, yeah, good for him. Talented man. Tal- if you can do both. <laughs> Wow, I wonder if he wakeboards too. If that's something that he's also uh, not only like I mean, does uh, he wakeboard, is he better than most at it? Yeah, I'm um, probably if he wanted to, he'd, he'd probably pick it up pretty quick. You know, not only not just kind of stand and be towed there, but I mean, yeah. you know, is he jumping wakes? Is he <laughs> is he doing all sorts of stuff? I got up on a I got up on a wakeboard once, maybe twice. Oh yeah, um, I have been up on one. Uh, you know, you kind of you drift out of the wake a little bit, and then hang out there. Then you kind of drift back in. Certainly no, certainly no jumps, no uh, <laughs> no surprises or anything. Yeah, I went wakeboarding a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one time I tried to do a backflip, and I like landed bad, and I never went for it again. What you tried to do a backflip? Because I, I could jump off the wake. Like I would jump off the wake, and I could land. So I'm like, all right, this time I'm gonna try to spin all the way around and. Oh I, like, really? Landed you on could, my... In your youth, in your ute. Oh yeah, I was a flipper. I could, I was doing flips off the boards, off the diving boards, all that stuff. Oh wow! Look at look at look at you go. Could you uh, yeah. or, or could you ski? Could you slalom? Yeah, I learned how to slalom. Uh, I wasn't quite my brother. He could start on the one ski. I had to start on two and then drop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, could... I, I it would just take long. I could start on one, but it would take more effort. So I just like fuck it. Let me just drop right away, and then you can pick it up. <laughs> uh, that's a good. That's a that's a good point. I never I never made my way over to the one ski. I was a. Uh, uh, I was a. Yeah, two, I was a double skier. The first couple times you try, it's 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 risky. You're going high speed. You drop that one foot and you gotta slip it in blindly on the back foot. 
happens. Yeah. yeah. No, I've, I've, I've seen it done in front of my eyes. Uh, you know, other people <laughs> in my family who were able to do so. I got into the, the water sports game late. Uh, yeah. It wasn't until, you know, I started going to my stepmom's family's cottage, and that wasn't until I was probably like 10. So I was a yeah. few years behind <clears throat> learning how to do it. So we had the skis that had the little kind of like door latch that hung that kept them together so you wouldn't go oh. full splits. <laughs> I've never seen them. Yeah, so I, uh, I spent I, – I would spend like, uh, you know, at least half of a summer on that because I had never been ski, I had never been snow skiing before, water skiing, whatever it might be. So the entire concept was just very, very new. Yeah. Uh, so it, t- it took me a little while, but I eventually got up on two on my own, uh, you know, on my own. Well, what happened? better, yeah, you accomplished it. I know my aunt, she was like 40 and she tried every year and she never got up and then she just gave up. She would try once a year. It became like a running <laughs> gag. We're like, when are you going to try this year, Linda? Let's get out the skis. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, a good. That's uh, a good point. You know, it's nice to see. I can remember. I can recall my father. You know, he figured it out. He, you know, I mean, I think he he had an experience from when he was younger. So it was kind of like he had to pick it up maybe ten or fifteen years after the fact. But uh, you know, he got up there. He would have been. He would have been uh, late forties, early fifties, and he found a way. Yeah, and you know, it's not all on the skier. You got to have a good boat driver too. Oh, that you, moment of tension when the, the 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 rope tugs and you gotta pull yourself up. Of course, yes. Behind every good uh, water skier is a good uh, <laughs> boat driver. Yes, and behind the boat driver should be a good spotter. You need a good spotter. <laughs> uh, you know, you need to establish your hand signals early. Um, yeah. Whether it be a faster, slower, I'm okay. Home. We had a yeah. uh, <laughs> time to go home. Yeah, we had one more lap around. You do a little circle, one more lap around. Well, yes, we had the, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I can recall the path that the boat would kind of always take. So home, you knew what to do, what that meant. It meant, you know, because yeah. you're, you're going to let go of the rope and sort of glide. That was my favorite part. That was the best part, was just kind of letting go. <laughs> and like, how close can I get to the dock? How close can you get gliding. to the dock? <laughs> that, that, that's really that's really what it was. Uh, yeah, and then you just slowly fall and sink. <laughs> Yep, I remember the uh, the little bottle of uh, like dish soap that we'd have there, so you could soap your feet up, so they could you could slip them into the uh, <laughs> into the little hole into the holsters. Also, oh, I, I can yeah. remember it all. Those rubber, yeah, those things. Oh yeah, wow. that brought back some memories. What a time! Bring back some summer memories, Mike. Of course, it we're talking summer. summer memories. I do have to say that uh, it was nigh a year ago, yesterday. Pretty much, yeah, almost to the day. Maybe a year ago, two days ago, um, we were live at the ACC. We were we were in the midst of SummerSlam. Our our pumped up uh, seats. I I, yeah, I, I still oh, remember. Yeah. I can still I still remember every detail <laughs> about oh, us I'll, getting I everything these. about getting in, getting that upgrade. And I remember the level of fear we I had when they're like, "Oh, you need to go to customer service," and we're like, "Oh yeah. God, I bought these." For a t- brief moment, I was scared, but then I'm like, "Wait, they wouldn't let us in the building, though." So of course, yeah, I guess there was that <laughs> little bit of like, "Okay, we got past the first checkpoint; they would yeah. have stopped us there." And I'm thinking to myself, like, "Ticketmaster's not going to fuck us on this one." Yeah, not I mean, we still don't time. have an explanation for why that happened. Still, no, we still do not have an explanation. And like other people in the row were like, "Yeah, us too. We don't know." But I don't know. Maybe Vince McMahon's like, let's spoil this row tonight. <laughs> I don't know. Section 326, <laughs> god damn it, moving up. Yeah, what if they did a special draw on the pre-show? We just missed it. Like, you guys are upgraded. <laughs> Yay. Maybe that's, you know, they do that maybe that's what we sometimes. missed, but it was uh, an unforgettable SummerSlam weekend. Of course, the takeover, that two out of three, that two out of three stipulation yeah, match between Adam Cole and Black Gargano. <laughs> yeah, the mystery black curtain. We all got a little in a, peek. In a square a cube-like <laughs> shape. Uh, yeah. Of course, we had Edge Edge dropping that big spear on Elias. The first time we'd seen Edge in a ring in years and years and years. We had the debut of the Fiend, which still may be the Fiend's best entrance he's had. Yeah, that was just the coolest. The f- Nobody knew what to expect, and it blew everyone away. No, and you know, and it it really it really was that. It was I feel like a good two and a half minutes. This is, yeah. the the introduction may have been longer than the match, may but have, it wasn't we about all, that. It wasn't about no, the we length all happy. of the match because we finally <laughs> got the fiend, arguably one of WWE's best characters of the last, God, a long time. Yeah, 
at least, yeah, like a pure... Pure character, pure gimmick type thing. Yeah, like a pure thing, not just not just the list of Jericho, you know, which is <laughs> which which was fantastic and over as hell, but yeah. an actual character uh, that we've seen from its from its inception to its debut, its creation, and all the way up until now, uh, one year later for the Fiend. Yeah, what a year it's been. What a year it's been. What a year the podcast has been, of course, the Shoot Brothers Wrestling Podcast. The only podcast, the only wrestling podcast, that is, that you can find online, hosted by myself, Cameron Osborne, my co-host, Mike the Shoot Shepherd. It's burning up over there. Burning Sizzling. up. Sizzling. Summer. Sizzling, uh, because it is summer. Of course, we are a few weeks away from SummerSlam, TakeOver 30, and I gotta say, I'm pretty hyped up for this. Yeah, it's looking to be, uh, I don't know, some good matches coming up here. On, on so. both of the cards, too. Not only the TakeOver 30, where we have yeah. the... Well, TakeOver's a given. It's going to be oh, ta- oh, Of course, TakeOvers are always going to be always gonna be great. <laughs> of course, we have that uh, the North American Championship ladder match. We do have the Pat McAfee, Adam Cole. Uh, yeah, that's official. That is official, and who knows what the hell's going to happen. McAfee, yeah. I've seen, you've seen some of those. He sent me some of those training videos. He's taking this for real. Some of the training videos. Did I send he's you going, the one? He's doing moonsaults. He's doing shit like that. Did I send you the promo that he, from like 100, yeah, like three years ago or weeks ago or something? Yeah. It was an insane amount of time. And it's just him cutting this promo on Instagram. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty damn good, I got to say. Yeah, so he can do it. He can do it on the mic, and we'll find out he can do it in the ring. We'll find out if we can do it on the ring. One thing that's really funny, though, if you look, there is the photo of Pat McAfee and Adam Cole shaking hands before that NXT fallout last week. And uh, it is funny. If you look, there is a height discrepancy between the two of them, you notice <laughs> in that photo. And it's funny because uh, like Pat McAfee's listed height is 6'1". I think it's like 6'1", 235. Uh, and that's like an NFL official yeah. That's and real. I believe it. I'll believe, I believe that. It. And yeah, then you see Adam it's... Cole, who looks so much smaller by comparison. Uh, who's, yeah, he's but not... his official height is listed at six feet tall. Yeah, that's not true. Yeah, there's he... a lot more than one inch between those boys. Yeah, I'd, I'd give, give him five nine. nine. I'd give him that. I'm oh, yeah? giving him that. What are you? You uh, are you five nine? No, I'd say I can push five eleven. Oh shit! You're that maybe much, five ten and a half. You're that much taller than me, eh? No, I'm a I'm a I'm a comfortable five eight. I guess it's yeah. been. Uh, no, maybe... I, I'd say you're probably Adams Cole's height then. Oh, wow, Daniel Bryan's the... probably around the same. Oh my god, that's the biggest compliment I've ever gotten. No, it's surprising. Like some <laughs> of these guys, Adam Cole's height. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Gargano, you know, yeah, a lot of these NXT standouts. Finn Balor. Are, yeah, smaller guys. Not traditionally the type of people that, you know, Vince McMahon likes. That's for sure. Well, that generation, though, has passed him by, it seems. I mean, there's still some of them, but well, you now still, everyone you still has have to be good at wrestling. Brian freaking Cage out yeah, there. You're he knows always, how to wrestle. You're always going to have the cages. Even Moxley's a pretty big dude. I didn't notice until oh, yeah. he was well, even in guys that like, match. Like Seth Rollins seems like an average height guy, but he's actually like 6'6", six, six, probably. Yeah, he's probably yeah, he's probably, a, probably a taller guy. Yeah. What's yeah. happening? What's happening to this current generation of superstars? <laughs> is it something? Is it the diet? Is it something? Is it something in the milk? Is it in the water? What is it? Uh, the uh, CrossFit. It's all, it's all that CrossFit. It's, you're, it's making you shorter. It's all that jumping they have to do. Yeah, you know, all these packs your spine. Yeah, all these moon salts. All of these, <laughs> uh, well, you know, all of these huge DDT, these spike DDTs, these spiking ranas. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna short. It's gonna shorten your spine as you go. Yeah, they used to say Andre the Giant never left his feet for like 15 years of his career. Well, I think we ha- we have ha- had this conversation on this podcast before where uh, you and I had a mutual friend, or we didn't know it at the time that they were a mutual friend, but if, uh, my stepbrother's hockey team was in a bus accident. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we have had this conversation where uh, one of the kids whose name I cannot remember. I think it was Ryan Parnell. That's what Ryan Parnell, who was particularly <laughs> injured. I remember he was wedged underneath one of the bus seats. And due yeah. to all the surgeries and the amount of recovery time it took, he grew like six and a half inches yeah, in six months. Down. Just from lo- <laughs> just from it being in a growth spurt and not moving. Uh, yeah. his body not having just, gravity pull you down. Not having that, that, that gravity. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, the... Uh, science hasn't. We're still the. We're not sure about gravity yet. Um, well, that's what they say. Like people go to space, they come back, they're an inch taller, and then they compress back to normal. I think. 
Yeah, who's that? Uh, uh, that Canadian astronaut, Chris Hadfield, is that his name? He the guy uh, with the mustache. Yeah, the one with the mustache. Yeah, they don't <laughs> yeah, talk about that's it. That's all I know. He, him he for. grew four and a half inches. Four and a half. Holy four and fuck. a half inches. This sixty-two-year-old uh, wow. man came back taller than he's ever been. <laughs> then he shrank back down after. And then, and then he shrunk immediately back down. He so he bought all these new clothes, and then he that might not be good for the shrinking. spine. You know, it probably wouldn't be. It probably wouldn't be. But uh, that is yeah. that, that, that is right. You know, the Summer Slam, the NXT Takeover of last year uh, did not disappoint, and this year's card, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, is uh, seems as though it may not disappoint either. Mike, how about we kick off the show? Why don't we start off the show? Yes. With a little. <laughs> yes. Let's start off the show this week the way we always start off the show, which is with the Tweet of the Week. It's the Tweet of the Week. It's the Tweet of the Week. <laughs> who's, been, who's been funny? Who's been misbehaving? <laughs> Um, well, yeah. Well, some, sometimes you know we see a lot of comedy up there. We see a lot of jibber jabbering, a lot of jawing at each other. Um, but sometimes some... tweets can just be um, asking for maybe a little bit of assistance because that happened earlier on this week when Shotzi Blackheart, uh, the NXT standout, tweeted out, "My car was stolen outside my apartment last night in Orlando. 2015 white Honda Civic." Uh, last tracked driving down Chickasaw at 5 a.m. My gear bag with all my gear, boots, entrance jacket, and helmet were in the trunk. If you're wondering why I'm wrestling in street clothes, that is why. Folks, if you are in the Orlando area and you see a 2015 white Honda Civic not being driven by Shotzi Blackheart, uh, say something. Please. Please. We got to get her that gear back. That helmet's very sentimental to her. The, the gear is half the gimmick. Yeah. What and are we going to do? Heard. Now she's just some woman with green hair and tights well, on. Well, she's still, uh, hopefully, they didn't steal her tank, though. They just stole her Honda. Yeah, at least the mini tank is kept at the at full sale. I would hope. I would hope, yeah. She doesn't, I mean, uh, to get that little mini tank in and out of her uh, in and out of her car every time. <laughs> in and out of the back of a Honda Civic. Uh, Chauncey Blackout, we're, we're sorry that your, uh, your car was stolen. We hope that you can retrieve your ring gear. Uh, and maybe, just maybe, being the Tweet of the Week champion is a small consolation. Yes, hopefully this will be like uh, Chris Jericho leaving the AEW World Title on the back of a limo, and remember it disappeared for like a week and it came. <laughs> I can't remember that. Was it was yeah. it that long? I thought it was like uh, maybe like it was a like a day or hours. two. Uh, I don't know. Once I think the word got out, someone probably was like, "Man, I can't do anything with this," and they just like bailed it somewhere. Yeah, Pawn Stars know. isn't going to take something that's hot. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully uh, Shanti gets that gear back. I hope so too because uh, I did notice like her it is the special gear she has. her tights are always ripped in the same spots and everything so well, yeah I mean she who know care. who knows how all that stuff works out right if it's they need to provide the gear themselves is that something that like the costuming department does you know I mean clearly it seems as though if Shotzi's stuff was on her person or in her car rather are they not allowed to leave it at full sale a lot of questions sort of stem from well, I'm uh, sure she has spec. to wash her own gear you don't think they have like a uh, a laundry a laundryman? I don't know. I don't know. All all questions. All questions. Maybe well, I mean, if Fit was furloughed, surely they would have <laughs> furloughed the laundry person. Yeah. Maybe they just have free laundry facilities. Like, here you go. Oh yeah, like here's washer, here's a dryer, bring your own yeah. uh bring your own detergent. Yeah, you don't need quarters, just do your you thing. Don't even need They might even supply the detergent. They just don't want to do the work. Free laundry. Wow, that's here's the a dream, box of eh? Tide. <laughs> that is the dream. Uh, Shotzi Blackheart, Tweet of the Week champion. Let's uh, let's keep moving on here because this is a shorter show this week. We'll be uh, foregoing our Wednesday Night War, our, our following kind of week, because uh, I'm heading out of town for the next couple days. We're actually only going to be covering a couple shows on this, uh, on this week's podcast. So let's kick it off uh, because it's SmackDown Live. Okay, folks, it's Friday night. It's time for SmackDown Live. It, uh, it used to be on Tuesday, but then uh, I think it was on Friday before, though. No, no, wait. They used to film it on a Thursday and then release it. It's just SmackDown Live. Yes. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> I honestly. What did I call anymore. it that one time? No, it was that Monday Night Live? That's what I called it. Uh, I think we did. I think <laughs> we. Uh, I forget. I forget. I've uh, I've said some improper things before, but uh, we're going to Fox. We're going to is is SmackDown on Channel Twenty Eight there in the uh, in the cable world? 
Uh, I think in Canada it's still on uh, the Sportsnet channel. Oh, it's on 22 or 30 or, 50, or 53. 53. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I, I believe so. I did I, I did wonder that because uh, yeah. I'm not often watching on cable or anything like that. Well, neither am I. But, <laughs> but I we're know. here. It's, <laughs> it's SmackDown. It's the blue brand. And uh, we actually kick off the show um, with a quick trip to the Firefly Funhouse. Yeah, Bray's there, and uh, now the wall's just full of just a bunch of Braun Strowman pictures. Xed out. And uh, yeah, he says, you know what? Point the finger at Braun for what happened to Alexa Bliss last week. All you had to do was give me what I want, so. But I don't know how he can do that. He's in the swamp. Um, he's, he, is he, is he drowning in the know. swamp? Because what I'm worried about is Braun Strowman, like, immediately after, you know, cut to five minutes after that swamp match. Did he kind of, like, pull himself up onto a beach somewhere, <laughs> coughing up, like, seaweed or, you know, like, algae and water or something? Or did he die? And now he's the, the monster. Is for real. he dead? Um, Bray Wyatt, as we know, has a uh, has a deep history with uh, falling into bodies of water and not coming out <laughs> for an extended period of time. Maybe Braun is taking a page out of Bray Wyatt's uh, playbook. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were talking about the Jason movies a little while back. He was alive in the first couple and then he died and. Maybe that'll be Braun. He's going to die, and he's going to come back as a zombie. Or it turns out that it was Braun Strowman's mother? Yeah, for the first match. That'll be the twist. (laughs) That'll be the twist we're waiting for. Yeah. Uh, Let's go to the ring here. Matt Riddle's taking on Sheamus. And, uh, yeah, you know, Sheamus just doing his big brawling. Riddle's fighting back, getting some good licks in until Shorty G comes running down and attacks Riddle, causing the DQ. But uh, Riddle just fights him off, uh, beats Shorty G all around the ring, drives him into the steps. So, uh, but anyways, Riddle wins by DQ, so he celebrates and just dances off to the back. But Sheamus, did you see Sheamus' face here? He looked pretty beat up. Yeah, this was uh, this was an extremely physical match. You know, Sheamus, <laughs> Sheamus, you know, like we were saying, Sheamus is one of those bigger guys. Like He's a brawler. Said, you know, from uh, from possibly a times past. But I feel like Sheamus has a lot of speed for somebody who is kind of that large. And we've seen Matt Riddle working against so many other opponents. He can kind of do anything. Oddly enough, these guys had some pretty good chemistry. Yeah, no, I like it. Good for yeah, kind of an, have been. for an opposing set of skills, um, you know, it's uh, I very much enjoyed this kind of out of nothing. Yeah, out of nothing, and uh, yeah, Seamus looks like he took a few potatoes from right away. <laughs> a few potatoes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but then Miz and Morrison come out to do the dirt sheet, and then we just get more shenanigans. Microphones cutting out. Retribution must be causing more trouble. Uh, but they bring in their guest via satellite, Mandy's hair. <laughs> with, with, with some googly eyes on it. Yeah, Don't we got a wig on a eyes. stick. <laughs> a wig on a stick with googly eyes. And yeah, they're just mocking her. Like, ah, Mandy. I don't know. <laughs> Typical. But it was, I guess it got a laugh out of us. for the. But uh, they bring out the real guest, Sonya Deville. And she just cuts another promo on beating up Mandy and cutting her hair and how much she loved it. And then the three of them just... Slinging insults around until heavy machinery come running out, beat up Mismo, send them running off, and then they'll fight again later. I think. Yeah, this uh, <coughs> this this segment seemed to be on a on a on a bit of a downward, uh, you know, trajectory until Sonya Deville came and brought it back up. These two women have been doing great work, and I feel like this is one of those segments, those kind of it's a a blip in the middle. These two have been working an incredible program this whole time since the Otis and Dolph Ziggler stuff. Uh, and these two have the ability to keep this going strong. They don't need Mismo interviewing a fucking piece of hair. Yeah, I don't know why Mismo. I think seemed, these uh... two women are certainly strong enough to carry this program by themselves. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I guess they, they wanted to have some sort of foil to throw Otis in there. But, because of yeah, course, as we needed. know, he is the Money in the Bank champ- champion or title have that. briefcase holder. Yeah, he did bring that out this week. Finally, I feel like we haven't seen it in a, <laughs> in a while. But, in a while, Crocodile. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see them later. For now, we got Cesaro taking on Lince Dorado, and uh, yeah, you give the Luchas some time, he's gonna, gonna look, look good. good. So 
this was a good pairing. Just Cesaro and with his strength is able to help him with all those twisty moves like a pretzel just floating around his body. But uh, anyways, Dorado put up a good fight, but Cesaro hits the neutralizer, gets the win. And C Cesaro getting a singles victory in 2020. I, I What's happening here? Yeah, is he the tag champ? Uh, yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Him and Nakamura. It's, it's I guess uh, I'm, I'm Cesaro Nakamura and Lucha House Party has pre-show written all over it. Yeah, they. I guess might as well Lucha House Party if you're gonna book them like you have been. Might as well put them on the SummerSlam. Yeah, get them some. Get them some kind of title belt. I'm sure they will be the next tag challengers. Did they? Uh, who was the third member? I feel like we haven't seen him in a while. Okay, it's Lince Dorado, uh, Lince Dorado Grand Metalik, Met and uh, was it Kalisto? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, there was a third though. There was a third. Yeah, I mean Kalisto was with them. I think he was the one doing the Lucha. Lu wait, did he get? Wait, was he a victim of the releasing? Maybe he may Maybe have he's been just hurt. I can't remember now. Could be. Doesn't sick, matter. Huh? And any any was of these one. things. There was a third. <laughs> uh, but then the Fiend is back. He makes his grand entrance to the ring. Uh, I think we have to do a commercial break because we just kind of cut to mar commercial and we come back. And now Bliss is in there with him, just seated in the ring. At first, I couldn't tell if it was a replay. But I was I, Well, I was curious if this was meant to be a little uh, production glitch Maybe that too. Yeah, I, I couldn't not, tell. You can't tell. We can't. Really or if it was just the fiend's here. powers warping her. I don't know. Either way, she was in the ring. She's uh, just kind of, yeah, sitting down, and the fiend goes up to her, raises his hand again, ready to slowly go in for the mandible claw. But then Alexa stops him. She just puts her hand up, and then she like caresses his face slightly, which surprises the fiend. He backs off a bit, doesn't know what to do, and then Braun Strowman pops up on the screen and just says. I don't give a damn about Alexa, which is pretty mean, I thought. And as soon as he said that, uh, there were so many Amazon personal helping devices in homes all across America that just started exploding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. They all just started asking if you want to buy something, started telling people what the weather was like outside, all sorts <laughs> of stuff. Well, uh, yeah, Bron says he, he tried to resist, but he was pushed to a breaking point, and he finally let it out. He's the, the thing, thing that nightmares are made of. I am the monster. So he was talking some some mean shit here. <laughs> some just some mean, <laughs> mean stuff. Is uh is Braun gonna come back uh slightly different than before he uh, went in? Maybe with some tattered I hope so. maybe some tattered clothing. Yeah, uh some bits of seaweed. On him. <laughs> like hanging around his ear, like he just kind of yeah. like washed up on shore, <laughs> and yeah. he hasn't had time <laughs> to look in the mirror. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah so, so he officially challenges. Challenge, I guess we're getting the Fiend Braun Universal, Universal Title match in and, a yeah, who knows? not not and not in, in a match. For now. For now, we haven't been assigned any gimmicks, but I think what's most important here is that it is in fact the Fiend. Uh, getting his yes, title finally. shot where previously we've seen Bray Wyatt taking on that opportunity. Yeah, so hopefully. And we got Alexa Bliss, the wild card. What was that touch? You saw her touch his face now, there. For a was, was the Swamp fight uh, a Bray Wyatt match or was it The Fiend? Uh, it was Bray Wyatt. But, okay. Uh, yeah. It was the Cajun Wyatt, I think. Right. The it was Hawaiian like shirt. Wyatt family Wyatt. Yeah. God, he's so cool. He's got so yeah. much shit going on, this guy. <laughs> Alexa <laughs> Bliss, though, that's, that's my right. that's my most intriguing moment of this. She it, looked like she was buying in there to the fiend for a second. You know, and I don't not, think that was fake. Not only is Alexa Bliss buying into the fiend, uh, this is a woman who, within a few short weeks, has like lost her best friend in Nikki Cross, pretty much been ousted from any title picture. Like this is a performer who's looking for a home. Yeah, and this could be great. I don't know. It's got me. It's got me intrigued. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, and this is what we've want, or we've been, uh, we've been asking ourselves this question. I mean, I guess ever since the Fiend's debut, it was okay. Who's next? Like, who's next to join the Fiend? Yeah, you know, and personifying some of these characters, as we saw Alexa Bliss performing as Sister Abigail. Uh, we really don't know. No, but. Yeah, and that's another one. People have been waiting years to see a, a Sister Abigail. 
Eventually, it's going to happen. Eventually, it has to happen. <laughs> uh, and I think Alexa Bliss... Alexa Bliss's sister Abigail will certainly do is certainly going to be uh, I'm more hyped for uh, you remember that Bray Wyatt sister Abigail it was like two summer slams <laughs> ago or maybe it was a survivor it was a bigger paper and then it got cancelled because everyone got the mumps <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Remember that? and he was gonna. We were gonna see Bray in a dress or something. It was gonna be yeah. It was gonna be a sister Abigail and uh, the demon Finn Balor, <laughs> if you can recall. Yeah, and we never. Yeah, and that might have been like one of the, one of the last times we were gonna see the demon. It may have. I can't think of uh, a time since then. Yeah, because I think AJ Styles ended up taking that match, and it ended up being yeah. pretty good. And then Kurt Angle joined the Shield because Roman couldn't. Oh my God! And <laughs> that, oh, that ma- that w- that was a shit show. So it was it's, funny. It was the Shield reunion was Dean, did, Seth, yeah. and Kurt Angle <laughs> coming in through the <laughs> the fucking crowd. I like it though. Kurt he put on the vest. He put on the gloves. He, he put on the vest. Put on the gloves. And I think it was a th- it, it was a th- it was a handicap match with Miz, Sheamus, Cesaro, Braun, and Kane. I couldn't remember does this, all that. Does this sound right? Does this sound like Maybe. it's uh, something? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think I so. I think, it was summer, I, I think it was SummerSlam two years ago. I think it was around the fall, like October. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Oh, it uh, does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Hardy's here. He's in the house taking on King Corbin. And, uh, you know, the match, nothing too special. The story was Seamus comes out, broke, kicks Jeff Hardy to cause the DQ and get revenge for earlier when uh, I guess Corbin sent Sir Gable out to fuck up the match. I don't know. They yell at each other. You no, know, but they're uh but they are pals. Seamus and Corbin? Are are they? I don't know. Oh, okay. They, they fucked each other over here. Yeah, it's so hard to tell these days. Yeah. I think or, yeah, it's just Baron Baron Corbin being passed around. Yeah, well, uh, they go right into a match. Corbin fights Sheamus. And again, nothing special. So just the night of uh, shenanigans. Matt Riddle comes out, springboards into the ring, but doesn't hit anyone. Uh, I'm still surprised the ref didn't ring the bell based on recent trends. Because, and again, if you had just watched Monday Night Raw last week with the odd DQ in the Sasha... Who is it? Sasha and someone? Sasha someone match. Oscar, Sasha, maybe. No, Oscar made Oscar got Oscar Sasha Bailey. disqualified <laughs> by attacking Bailey at ring. Uh, who knows? Who knows? But yeah. I mean, on, or uh, maybe at least on SmackDown you can play it off like, hey, on SmackDown we don't play those rules, or like we have a different rule set here on SmackDown. <laughs> maybe you can, but uh, yeah, the distraction works. Corbin or yeah, Sheamus hits a broke kick, gets the win. So Matt Riddle and Corbin, they'll fight. SummerSlam. Well, this has been the uh, these. I feel I feel like these are the four guys, at least, and probably some other names that I could think of, or you know, not just don't think of right now. Like this is the intercontinental title scene. Is these yeah. kind of four guys uh, plus AJ, who we didn't get the chance to see? Yeah, this we week. didn't see this week, but uh, yeah, I guess he will need a challenger for SummerSlam. And- yeah, those are the guys that you're keeping fresh right now. So. Yeah, well, I mean, of course. Well, this is the second time we've seen these guys. The second time we've seen Matt Riddle and Sheamus tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. We shall see. But then uh, the golden role models, Sasha Bailey, come out. Because they got to have a video conference with Stephanie McMahon. And Steph, she gives them some praise for accomplishing the gold, winning all the gold, and they thank her. And Steph's like, yeah, you guys, you've been busting your ass, working all three brands, doing what it takes. But then she swerves them, gets serious, and says, yeah, you know, you made a mockery of my stipulations. You stole the ref's shirts, all that bullshit. And they try to calm her down, but Steph's like, here's what we're going to do. At SummerSlam, Sasha, you're going to defend the Raw Women's title. Same for you, Bailey. Uh, you're going to have to defend against the winner of a triple brand battle royal next week. So uh, it could be anyone. Could be anyone, and this is uh, as soon as I heard Triple Brand, I looked. Uh, I looked back down, and Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley, yeah, she seems like uh, she yeah, came she, after she. She came back with a new gimmick. Of course, we were just pondering last week what what does happen next with her because she's sort of done all she can down there in NXT. Yeah, won the belt. Don't seem you normally. Most people just win it once and then move on. So. 
Yeah, yeah. Rhea, Rhea Ripley, Ripley versus Bailey. Bailey. That could be a good match. You know, and for the rest of this triple threat, uh, I, d I don't really know where to kind of put the uh, the other pieces right now. Or like, uh, sorry, or like the other members uh, that would yeah. be involved. Um, you know, you could throw in the Shotzi Black Hearts of the World. You know, of course, you could have Os you could you and you could also have Oscar in there, right? You will, you do need one of these top top level competitors in there. Yeah, yeah no, no mention, mention of, of the, the tag titles, though. I was hoping they would defend all the titles at SummerSlam. Yeah, but there's still time. I guess we'll see still about time. that. We'll see about that. They had them on. They were holding them though. They're oh yeah, they always bring them out. They're still they always bring around. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, they're the <laughs> best champs they've ever had in the year. The best yeah. champions the women's tag belts have ever had. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can. Uh, I'll agree. I'll, I'll agree with you there. And you know how much I love the iconic. I well, I mean, th that would be the only second place option for you. <laughs> and even just when I heard you say that, like, you must yeah. be serious. I'm serious. If you prefer this, uh, all they need is a better name. All they need is a better name. Golden role models. Don't yeah. like it. Don't like it. I don't think. I don't think they even like it. On commentary, they call them that. They're like, don't call us that. Be, I I At feel like not. what I don't like about about it most is that it was like a week after Britt Baker did her role model thing, <laughs> and I was just like, well, oh, guys, come on. Yeah, I get that, but I don't think Vince McMahon would. Oh, he. You, we, I don't think Vince watches Dynamite. He wouldn't even. Be, that's what I mean. You think he Vince watches Dynamite? <laughs> No, he doesn't even watch NXT. Exactly. <laughs> uh, let's go to the main event, though. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Bismo is taking on Heavy Machinery, and uh, I guess Sonya Deville is just a manager now with Bismo, so she's out there looking good. I like her little suit getup she wears. Yeah, she has her. Um, well, anytime I do like when there's a, uh, it's um, you know, they have you, you have your looks. To explain what you're gonna do, we always talk about Triple H having uh, <laughs> his four different outfits. Or if Randy Orton is ever wearing pants, uh, you know, there's no chance of anything happening. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't, I don't think, think we'll ever see him wear pants. pants. Not, Not until, until the Hall of Fame. fame. Did, yeah, well, I was gonna say, did <laughs> he, I fame. think he wore pants on the Evolution thing. Yeah, yeah. When, when they first came, came, in. came in, that may have been the last were, time were, we suits saw, were part of their gimmicks. That yeah. may have been the last time we saw him in pants. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but anyways, anyways Sonya Deville's, Deville's out there managing, and that ends up being the story, because Mandy Rose, Rose comes, comes out mid-match. Mid She's got a new, shorter hairstyle, hairstyle. Taylor Swift, 1989 era. Uh, but it looks good. She looks great. Her and Sonya start brawling. The ref throws out the match, just like they did last week. So apparently the rules are the same on SmackDown. Okay, I'm good. We're rewriting this, uh, <laughs> this, uh, rule book here as we go. Yeah. Because Sonya and Mandy, they didn't touch anyone in the ring, but the ref said, fuck that. We're done. We're done here. I'm going home. Which so. happens. You know, rules change all the time. Remember uh, two-line pass? Remember no two-line passes? <laughs> yeah, what a stupid rule. But, you know, they've done that. Real sports games have been canceled due to riots and stuff. It had nothing to do with the people in the... Of course, you know. Uh, the malice in the palace. The malice in the palace. <laughs> I was thinking these. I was trying to... How do I tie that one in? Because uh, yeah. I'm going to say that was a bit of both. The fan, that fan I mean, should, not was have, caused by the, should not have thrown his uh, little cup of water on him. <laughs> you don't do but that you, to yeah. a man. What if Ron yeah. Chess didn't know how to swim? He thinks he's drowning. Uh, you know, <laughs> oh. next thing you know. Oh, oh boy, oh, boy. But uh, anyways, everyone's going crazy here. The women are going at each other. Uh, the men got to break things up. Everyone's, the officials run out, but uh, I think it continues backstage. They're arguing some more, and then the lights shut out. Retribution shows up. They got weapons, bats, pipes. They just jump the barricade, get in the ring. They start just, uh, I don't know, just fucking shit up, I guess. They start cu cutting, uh, cutting the ring ropes, too. Just kind of destroying the entire uh, scenery, the set. Yeah, the commentary team just runs the fuck out of there. They, uh, I've never couple, seen Corey Graves run so fast. Yeah, he books it. Someone swings a pipe at him. Uh, there's a couple of women in the group I noticed this week. You now that's something I noticed immediately, and upon further inspection of last week's last week we had footage on Monday Night Raw, I think it was, of them burning this uh, thing in the middle of the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, the box. Oh, oh yeah, the big box. <laughs> um, yeah, there there are some uh, there are some women in in Retribution. You can you can tell. I mean, we don't know who's who or what's what, but you can tell. You, you can tell, tell. and uh, it makes sense because at one point they go into the crowd, just start beating up bystanders, including some poor woman. They just kind of surround her, and that's what they. That's like, the true. Woman a man wouldn't have beaten a woman. 
Yeah. yeah. On, in that situation. On, on air. On air. Every, every once in a while, but that wouldn't have been a good look. A gang just attacking. A gang of hoodlums uh, beating up my uh, my my favorite um, crowd standee, my favorite performance center standee. Um, they're not wearing their John Cena. You cannot. You can't see me mask anymore. Uh, they're just wearing a normal uh, black one. So it's a little bit well, harder. Yeah, that's for why me I to couldn't find them this week. It's a little bit you harder for me to pick her out. <laughs> I think she has dreads or like br- braided hair. You never get close enough to kind of like make out these specific details. So, mm. you know, and I can't tell who she is because I can't really see all the face. So I can't really, you know, match it up against photos or whatever. Uh, yeah. She's out there, though. And uh, whoever she is, she's going to be. Did she escape? Uh, oh, yeah. She was fine. A retribution? I, I, okay, I, I, she, she did escape, but um, <laughs> she's, uh, she's going to be champ one day. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> all right. Wait. You never know. We don't know. We got to find out who's under that mask. Now. I'm calling it now. Uh, uh, so, so they beat up people. I think they, they, they send a cameraman running and. Uh, the, the big finale, finale they, they grab some spray paint, paint cans and, and a chainsaw. chainsaw. Guy, guy cuts, cuts the ropes off. They spray paint, paint some shit on. on. Well, I don't know. Do they write something down? down? Or do they just... Oh, yeah, they write retribution, retribution on <laughs> I think so. It took them a little bit of a long... I mean, it's a long word. Retribution. It's a long word. <laughs> now, wasn't... What was the team that I clearly thought was called Retribution, but they weren't? It was Paige. It was when Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose showed up on the main roster with Paige. What were they called? Uh, Sonya, Paige, Mandy. You remember that? What were they called? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah she, she like, like brought, brought them in. in. Oh, what was that? Uh, hopefully it'll come to us. It'll just ding in our heads. Yeah, I can't remember either, but I feel like it was dangerously close to Retribution, which sort of gets these gears going that, oh, yeah, this is, a, this is an all-female stable. <laughs> well, well, I don't know, I don't know. But, but we got, we got a, chainsaw. a chainsaw. We got a chainsaw, and that was uh, and that was how SmackDown closed out. Yeah, I was hoping he would cut the ring too, but he just cut the ropes. You just kind of cut it in the middle just of the start. <laughs> yeah, but then someone was hiding know. under there, like ah, <laughs> forgot about that segment. Oh my god. <sighs> that, that was, was it. That that was that was SmackDown. That was uh, another great episode. Yeah, we didn't see, uh, we didn't see either of the titles. Uh, no, all, n- n- none of the titles. I well, you know, n- n- or you know, well, we saw Bailey. We saw. I guess that and we be. saw Cesaro. Oh yeah, but uh, but but, <laughs> but that's about it because we are building towards SummerSlam and SmackDown side is really only looking for someone to cover that IC title belt, maybe or belt, maybe a multi-man match involving Matt Riddle, Sheamus, Hardy, AJ. Corbin, unfortunately. Uh, Corbin's Corbin's got to be the hardest working dude. <laughs> I'm not on, saying he doesn't work hard on this. Of course, we're not saying anybody doesn't work hard. But this, but he's, and I think we may have brushed on this last week. But he's on. He's in 20 minute segments every week for the last year and a half. This guy <laughs> has not taken time off. Well, uh, I think it was around this time last year. We need to have another. King of the Ring tournament to get rid of that king crown. Oh, thank God, yeah. He needs to drop the king gimmick. How long do people usually hold on to it? I think until the next King of the Ring. Oh, okay, so... uh, I mean, well, at least back when it was yearly. Now it's not always... Now they just do it whenever they want, so who knows? Right, right. Because, yeah, the way he shows up now with... He still has the scepter and the crown, but he doesn't... But his ring gear looks more like Brody Lee. Yeah. And yeah, then I'm like, nice. I don't know what's going on here with you, dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm done, done with the king. king. Bring yeah. on King Gable. King Gable. That's what's next. Yeah. That is what's next. And that was SmackDown. Mike, I think I know what's next. It's a break. Yeah, let's take a little break. Let's take a quick little break. We're going to be back because we do have Monday Night Raw. And uh, switching up, we got some Would You Rathers Woo! coming yeah, up a little know. later. So you're going to want to stick around. We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Oh, is it the uh, the Rocky theme? <laughs> yeah, <Yes. laughs> there it is. Yeah, normally you only hear the first bit. Normally you only hear the f- <laughs> normally yeah normally you don't hear the uh, the choir outro leading to unless the, you're watching the first the though. crescendo leading to the end. <laughs> you gotta kill him. Who uh, is anyone credited with uh, th- that writing that song? Bill Conti. 
Bill Conti. He is he a uh, somebody in a band already or just there? I don't know. He probably did some things, but uh, I don't know. I just know that. Okay, he's possibly a, a more of a film composer than an actual. Uh, just like know. in a band or something. That's a good question. That is a good question. But yeah, I am pumped. I am hyped <laughs> because it's the second half of the show. You know, the second half of the Shoot Brothers. Um, the second half of the Shoot Brothers Wrestling Podcast. Bro. Bro. Uh, we're going to switch things up because usually, as you know, as we all know, we always, we always, we let, we do trivia every single week. We're at show 86. <laughs> now oh, wow. um and then and it's almost being consistent i think maybe it was in the early early stages of the show did we did we come up with the idea to do trivia every week um and then after like some 60 weeks later <laughs> we came up with another game to play in the middle uh <laughs> and this one we're gonna play this week it's a little would you rather You know how the game's played. Uh, it's Would You Rather, but no drinking. This, uh, you know, usually I think of Would You Rather as a drinking game. Would you rather? Yeah. You know, uh, or kind of like, oh, in, or in the same vein of like a truth or dare. Yeah, it makes me think of like uh, Never rather? Have I Ever and things like that. Never Have I Ever, another good, which, which <laughs> I don't think we could apply Never Have I Ever to a wrestling situation. Um... Uh, well, I mean, show. you could make things up. Well, we'd have to make things up. But Mike, this like, show never is... have I ever thought Matt Riddle had a great ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a weird place. Uh, to you went there. You did go there, though. I'm um, just saying. Yeah. Just... Of course, we had to make it up. But uh, for would you rather, we don't make these things up. This is genuinely which one of these things you and I or you would rather have. Yeah, it could be many multitude of things, but uh, you must pick an option either way, no matter how good, bad, anything in between. And, you know, a little, a little explanation always goes a long way. Of course, reasons behind. <laughs> Mike, I have uh, I have six of these for you. Nope, sorry, five. Uh, I got five. Perfect. Um, I'm going to kick it off. Okay. Maybe your first one. Uh, would you rather... Uh, Cesaro does his little swing you around thing uh, for like way too long, you know, like way too long. Or, <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Or Big E <laughs> does his slap your ass thing for like way too long. So to me, yeah. What, what, this is well. This is for you. This is. Would you rather? Oh yeah, of course. It's for. It's to you. So Cesaro's. Like they're performing the move on me. Yes, of course. That's what I mean. Yes, yes. Um, uh, well, let's see. Um, uh, you know, the ass slap. I feel like the swing, it doesn't hurt as much, but being swung around for that long is not good. The blood, you know, going to your head and all that. The way the blood like, flows. Like, if it's a ridiculous, if he does it for like 20 minutes, I could be passing out. I could be in some trouble. Because <laughs> you didn't say how long. Yeah, Whereas, you know, like, like a, a, you know, like a comical amount of time. Or, you yeah. know, just. He probably couldn't sustain 20 minutes. But either way, uh, ah, you know what? Yeah, the, let's go for the swing. It'd be a fun ride. <clears throat> the ass slapping is more degrading to me. Like if picture, it was, like picture it was the same amount of time. Let's say it was like a minute and a half. <laughs> yeah, I'll do the swing. The swing is more impressive, I think, uh, for the crowd. It'd be more impressive on you also. And me, I gotta hold my hands, my elbows. You know, you gotta, you yeah, know. you you gotta be safe. Where if Biggie's slapping your ass, you just gotta, you just kind of gotta stand there and yeah, take it. Yeah, I just gotta sit there. And, exactly. So there we go. I'll take the swing. <laughs> okay, you ready for mine? Yes, I am. This kind of ties into a bit what we were talking about earlier on the show about, about uh, water skiing and jumping and flipping and all that kind of stuff. Because this is for you personally. You get one shot to do this, but no training, no practice. You have to try it. You have to climb to the top rope, and you have to either attempt a moonsault or a 450 splash. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so moonsault, you're jumping backwards, right? Yeah, you're back flipping, landing on your stomach. Where the 450, 450. splash, I'm front flipping, but landing on my back. Yeah, no, you're landing on your stomach. Well, on my stomach. Right. Landing on your back would be too easy. That would just be like a swan top. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they're both got an element of danger to them. And just going into it clean, just right now. Climbing the top rope. Yeah. Putting on some gym shorts and climbing the yeah. top rope. God, I'm gonna go. 
I'm going to go 450 Splash because I can recall um, at, at, uh, at, at, the, at the college I used to go to, there's a long diving board that came off um, that, you know, you could dive off the water to. And the backwards dive was always something that eluded me. Mm-hmm. I could never get... I, I just couldn't do it. I'd, I'd end up like kind of doing is like i get like a three quarter turn and i wasn't <laughs> i was never able to complete that um yeah. where when you would try to do like the flip in the air and then cannonball or something like that i could pull that yeah. off especially when i was with a, like a little kid i would just fly up there because <laughs> you can you think the moving forwards you can see where you're going it's yeah less, i uh... think the moving forward maybe that's what it was and and i tried backwards dives Every weekend, I would, ask, <laughs> I, and I and I could never get it. And you know, you try like five or six, you know, maybe no more than ten, and you're like, "Fuck, today's not my day." We'll come back at it next week, and I could just never do it. So I'm gonna go four fifty splash on this one. All right, good stuff. Okay, Mike, we're oh, still going. Fun. We're still going. We got more. Yes, we got more. Would you rather's here? Uh, and this one is just a, uh, you know, this. I'm just gonna t- tell me what you value. What you sort of value <laughs> in a professional wrestling performance, because Mike, this is still about you. All of these would you rather's are about you. You know, right. where would you rather find yourself? Um, would you <laughs> rather win the Money in the Bank, uh, you know, briefcase in a four and a half star ladder match? Okay, or mm-hmm. would you rather lose the WWE title in a five star match? At WrestleMania, uh, I think I would rather lose the WWE title in a five-star match because you know that means at that point you've already accomplished. You've already are the champion. You know, winning the Money in the Bank doesn't mean you're going to win the title. But at that point, I've already in the title. I'm at WrestleMania, possibly main eventing, and a five-star match to boot. I don't care if I lost some of the greatest matches of all time. My favorite guy lost. Yes, we've seen there in 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 an incredible match like that. There is no defeat in the loss, really. No, I th- I mean I think we <laughs> we w- I think we could all agree that Dustin Rhodes came out of that match way more over than he than he was going into it. Oh yeah, exactly. Exactly. So there you go. Good uh, my next, would you rather? Once again, you personally. Mm. Most of these are personal. I got one that's not personal. But for you, would you rather have an MMA-style fight against Chad Gable or a boxing match against Baron Corbin? Oh, now he is, as we know, a... A Golden Gloves. <laughs> of, uh, yeah, Something. of, of whatever. Yeah, <laughs> of yeah. whatever. Which I, thought was a base- which I thought was a baseball thing. <laughs> I think we um, talked about that. Are they? Did, does Baron Corbin actually have baseball accolades? And <laughs> Vince McMahon seems to think that Golden Glove, he must be strong. I don't know what the hell position he would play in baseball. Catcher de- or designated yeah. hitter. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't look that strong though. He doesn't look that fast. Either. Like he's, yeah, I don't know what he would do. Maybe, Maybe he's be a, a pitcher, closer, a reliever. One yeah. of those, yeah, one of those like uh, CC Sabathia. Maybe size. he's got a weird lefty knuckleball or something. Yeah, he can do the one thing <laughs> really, really good. So he's, uh, so he's a base, so he's a pitcher. Uh, what was the second one? <laughs> okay, no, uh, okay, yeah, the box so box. Corbin, box Dodging Corbin, or yeah. MMA against Chad Gable. Yeah, yeah he's I've got uh, that wrestling. Of course, he does yeah. have the amateur wrestling experience. Yeah, um, but I wanted to make it MMA because it's more dangerous. More, it is more dangerous. Do I mean, you know, because amateur, because that's you can, you know, many. He can, he can break your leg if you want. Many to. wrestlers perform in MMA to uh, to a lot of success. You know, they're not all oh, just yeah. you know. Everyone has their own. Habib. Dis- everyone, everyone has their style. Um, now lately, I've uh, it's come across my Instagram feed. Uh, it's just it's Otis's Instagram. Which is mostly videos of him and Chad Gable working out ah. in one of their garages. They call it the they Carnage Shack. Buddies, eh? They call it the Carnage Shack, and <laughs> uh, yeah, they'll just you know it's like it's like a double uh, a two car garage. Just f- fucking doors are open, and the whole thing is just a gym they've created for themselves. Um, I just picture Otis lifting like empty keg drums and 
<laughs> makeshift weights like that. <laughs> like, sh- <laughs> like stakes, stakes <laughs> yeah, on the like end big, of poles. You know those big uh, wooden spools? Oh, yeah. That, those that, yeah, that have uh, yeah, like <laughs> copper wiring for construction yeah. sites, and he's just like <laughs> bench pressing it. Yeah. Things like um, that. He's, you know, the, uh, these, these boys are pushing some serious weight, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. So I've seen this. I think I could, and like I, j- I just mentioned regarding Baron Corbin's speed, I think that with enough kind of uh, warming up, I could probably dodge a couple of those knockout blows that he's, that he takes credit on. You know, if I can yeah, get and- under there and get a nice shot that's like above the belt, but uh, you know, in a in a good spot right there, like the kidneys or something. And for this one, I will allow preparation. It's not like the moon. Oh, I can get I can get a couple. I I can get a month. I can give you a couple months. A couple months. A couple months. You know, uh, have a good training montage up there in uh, the the Alps. Or yeah, go up to Blue yeah. Mountain in the winter and go up Banff. <laughs> go, Banff. Go, yeah, go to, yeah, we'll go to Banff in the winter. Somewhere in Western Canada, they got those beautiful. And we'll mountains. film, and it's mostly just me. Yeah, like hacking down trees, uh, <laughs> running up snowy hills, slipping a little yeah. bit to per, to show that, and then getting back up to show like, um, you know my commitment. Out running a pack of sleigh dogs. Yeah, very well. Oh, very running much. past them, and they're all. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> they're all they're jealous of your I'm, speed. I'm moving so fast. Uh, Look at yeah, them. I would have. Have you ever? Um, I mean, I've never been in a fight uh, in, in any in any sense of the word. I've never been in a fight, but I do have a friend who does uh, jujitsu, and sometimes you know he likes. He likes showing you new moves he's learned. So, you know, you go to his place and he will kind of get you on the ground and put you in locks and holds and things like that. And it is the most uncomfortable fucking thing ever. I a tap immediately every single time. Uh, oh, yeah. It hurts. I think I could outlast Baron Corbin in that style. Remember in The Simpsons when Homer just kind of has to sit there and take punches and let the opponent. <laughs> I'm not going to take punches. But I'm gonna tire him out. Same kind of concept. Yeah. Uh, so we're going. Uh, we're going Baron Corbin. Yeah, I think that's the fight I would take as well. You know, you, you just, just dodge, dodge and weave, and, and get, get a couple good punches, punches in. in. You never know what could happen. But see, if there's one thing I know about Corbin. He's sneaky. He's, He's sneaky. sneaky. He's, He's a golden, golden gloves. gloves. You know, of course, he may he may get one below the belt because he knows that he gets one warning. Well, I think. He but, but then you get. get uh, I think. He, I, don't know. I think he's that type of a performer. He might be. But he does it again. He loses a point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's big stuff. It's big stuff. All right, for your next one here, Mike. Yes. yes. Okay. Would you, Mike, would you, Mike Shepard, rather be involved in a storyline where you have sex with the corpse of a woman that you were in love with who recently <laughs> passed away, or oh would you rather get heat by using your your partner's death as a way to turn his nephew he their nephew heel. Your partner's death to turn the nephew heel. I'm trying yeah. to think of who you're referencing on that one. That one is uh that one is uh Chavo Guerrero Jr. and Vicky coming oh. in there. Okay. In the so ring, either in that the or the Katie feel. Vick angle. Yeah, which one <laughs> <laughs> the necrophilia. <laughs> I try I, I tried to play it out. Yeah, which 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 one of those angles would you rather? Yeah. Um so this is like uh, your 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 partner recently dies. Yeah. So I, I, in this position, I'm Chavo. No, I think in this position you're Vicky. Rey Mysterio. No, I think. <laughs> oh, oh. So my my life partner dies. Yes, your Sorry. life partner I dies. You were my tag partner. And you use their death as a way to get cheap heat to turn his nephew heel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know they're both pretty bad. Both options. pretty bad. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, bah, bah, bah. they both involve death in one way or the other. I guess I'll go with the Guerrero angle because it's been done many times before, and it'll still be done in the future. So, like, uh, some people even want it to be done. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> like Paul Bear is like, when I die, you better use it. Bring oh, up did, that urn. Was was that in the uh, in his in his uh, in his will? Might not have been his will, but I, I think it was just like a thing that was known. He made it known 
Oh, that's sick. That's <laughs> but, sick. Uh, I'll go with that. When CM Punk pours that thing out and like smash, yeah. oh my god, that was huge. <laughs> oh, it's exactly. huge. Big, dirty heat. Yeah. So much heat. Yeah. <laughs> when I try, I was just trying to go on, like find top lists of worst, uh, worst, worst um, yeah, worst angles, and uh, of course the Katie Vick one, which I already knew. And uh, and the <laughs> Eddie Guerrero one, th- those come up, uh, those come up across a lot of things. Yeah, I mean the, the Guerrero, Guerrero one, they didn't have to do it, but at least it's like, it's a real thing. Whereas the Katie Vick, you never had to invent that story to begin with. Yeah, <laughs> it, it just seems so. <laughs> None weird. of that had to happen. None of that had to happen. No. Uh, and... But there, but there you go. Nice clean family <laughs> show, eh? Nice clean family entertainment. Now it is. But, but you know, know I, I gotta give them credit. credit. They, they don't, don't erase the past. past. If you go on the WWE Network, Network, you can watch all those segments in full. So Triple H throwing on a cane mask, mask and pretending to have sex with a mannequin in a casket. Is Benoit the only thing you can't find? He's on there. They just don't put his name in the title. All right. his matches are on there. Oh, okay. So you can still watch everything that he did. Yeah. Like, like the main event of WrestleMania 20. It'll be like, triple threat match with Shawn Michaels and Triple H for the title. Oh, uh, they won't okay. say anything. So is but, there nothing that's... Is there anyone who is true or anything that is truly banned from the network? Nothing like no wrestler or anything. Like, like if there was like, like an accident, little nip slip or something, they might cut that out. Right. But like nothing, yeah. nothing real. Nothing like when, real uh, and no, no segments from a show that they yeah, Nothing that would be like, oh man, we wish we didn't do that. They won't erase the past really? like that. Uh. Yeah. But like uh, Lonzo Ball or whatever, the brother is dropping the M bomb. They'll go back and bleep that out. Right, right. Lonzo <laughs> and uh, Lavar and Lamelo and Le- I couldn't remember it. All the L's. Leangelo. He's the one that we all. He's Leangelo's the middle child. Who he's is, a troublemaker, isn't he? Who is definitely not making any professional sport. Like Lonzo is already there. The youngest yeah. one, Lamelo. He will be. Uh, he will be a top five draft pick this coming draft. Yeah, Leangelo, so middle kid. No. He's the troublemaker. No, he's he's got gonna nothing. get in some trouble. He's truly, he's exactly. tr- he's truly got nothing. He's no, gonna I lash know. out. But <laughs> <laughs> enough about that. <clears throat> because you, my friend, have, are up for uh, something special here. Because you have won yourself a weekend getaway, and you have to spend it with either Billy Kay or Peyton Royce. So essentially what this is right now is choose your iconic. Choose, choose your iconic, iconic but, but it's a nice weekend, weekend getaway. getaway. You're going to have some fun activities, some nice dinners, dinners all this kind of stuff. stuff. You, you share a room. room. I don't know. You know I don't, nothing has to happen, Jesus but you share a room. Jesus Christ, Mike. You got you to gotta, you gotta, you gotta take it there. See, I... There's two beds in the room. Oh, thank God. It's up to you guys. Thank God. Um... <laughs> God, see, and one thing, one thing I do, one thing I gotta say I like most about the Iconics is that I like them both. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, sometimes in a tag team or, yeah, or, you know, you may feel as though one person is less essential to the organization than the other. One person isn't pulling their weight, doing their thing. Uh, but, like, the Iconics, they, they're both very necessary for this to work. Billy Case, really funny. I mean, I remember. Mm-hmm. I, I've, yeah, we, we've shared those videos of her just yelling. <laughs> she seems like Kayla! she'd be fun to just hang out with. Kayla, she does yeah. seem uh, really f- like, like does at seem the bar. She seems like she'd, like she'd control, control the room. She'd be telling stories. Having and the way she squawks, <laughs> you know, all attention is going towards her. And you know, I just uh, hearing her tell a funny story, I would very much enjoy. <laughs> um, so if it comes to, would you rather? I gotta go, Billy Kay, on this one. There you go. You didn't even explain Peyton Royce. You oh, must, um, yeah, you must be all. It. No, it's okay. I, I, sorry, I, She's a beautiful right. woman. They're both very beautiful. You're nice, right. You're right. I didn't. Woman. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't include the Peyton. <laughs> um, I mean, well, I think choice I, was made. Too much respect for Sean Spears. I think that's what well, really the question that's is. There you go. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> and her, she, uh, she, her YouTube channel isn't funny. Peyton Royce, I don't think, yeah, the we're personality, working on it. We're working I don't think it would, it would, it would t- you'd have to crack the ice a bit more. She yeah. might be funny underneath. But yeah, Billy, we'll, we'll have Billy, to see. Billy would make you feel comfortable. Yeah, she would, like, it's like, have a drink, have a drink and hear a funny story. Billy Kay's yeah. got you covered there. <laughs> okay, Mike, I got another one here like, for yeah, you. She'd be like, two in the morning, 
Sorry, I was. Let's do shorts. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, get she some wings. Way and more fun. She'd be eating all messy faced wings at two in the morning, laughing her ass off. It seems way more fun to get wasted with, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, Mike. Next right. one here for you. Um, a couple new things <clears throat> which have come up on our television recently on Monday Night Raw on both NXT. Um, our newest gimmicks. I gotta say. So, Mike, would you rather uh, win a match in the fight pit? Or win a match on Raw Underground? <laughs> uh, I think I'd prefer the Fight Pit. It's more of a special attraction. It's more unique. There's only been one. We've already had like six matches on Raw Underground. <laughs> it's been two weeks and yeah. you had six matches. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't seem as special, Raw Underground. It's just kind of a, you know, it's okay for now, but we don't know how long it's going to last. Whereas the Fight Pit, you know, you can bring it out every couple of years and it'll seem fun. Yes, yeah, so we so can fight. keep bringing this fight pit gimmick uh, for these occasional matches. Oni Lorcan, Timothy Thatcher in the fight pit. That's what this is all building towards. Yeah, and then Thatcher, you know, if he wins that, he's 2-0 in the fight pit. Now all of a sudden he's Mr. Fight Pit. Oh, that'd be sick. It's his gimmick, yeah. Uh, yeah, all right. My next one for you, my friend. Would you rather see Kota Abushi join AEW... Or Kazuchi, Kazuchi, sorry, Okada. Okada. I fucked up his first Kazuchika? name. Just Okada. Yeah, Kazuchika. Okada joined WWE. <clears throat> wow. Okada in WWE or Ibushi in AEW. What's most, appeal what's most attractive of Okada in WWE are all the matches we haven't seen. Because mm. we've seen... You know, we we, we uh, Ibushi has been around more of the AEW guys before, right? You know, of course, the Golden Lovers, the Young Bucks, Cody, those types we've seen before. Mm -hmm. The Okada, like Okada Lesnar, would be nuts. Yeah, that could be really. That cool. would be huge. <laughs> like, because uh, uh, the thing about Kazuchika Okada, you all, I always forget until I see him, is that I'm like, oh, you're huge. You are. Huge. He's got to be. He's got. He's got to be like at least six three, six four. Like this guy is big, and you know he's able to pull. You know, and he he pulls off that tombstone pile driver, and yeah, some spins with it sometimes. That would be crazy to see. Yeah, yeah him versus Brock. Brock I mean, that would be a cool match. Him versus Brock. Uh, Kazu uh, Okada Drew. Okada Drew. Would be a huge Daniel match. Bryan. Oh, Dan, yeah, even, and then even one of these smaller guys. Um, it popped up on my yeah. YouTube a couple days ago when I watched it. It was Okada and Marty Skrull from All In. If you can, oh if, yeah, I forgot uh, about that. Yeah, that was. It I was think they like, went a little too long. It was for like people twenty six and a half minutes or something. Yeah, it, it, it was a great match. Fantastic, but yeah, it was Okada can do so many things against big guys and little guys. Where Ibushi and AEW would just be more of more of what we. More of him br almost breaking his neck every time. Uh, <laughs> they, we know the bumps we're going to get because we know what Ibushi's going to give us. We know we're going to get, yeah, Spike Rana's on the apron. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're going to get uh, double moonsaults um, onto, a cha onto a table. Uh, <laughs> we're going to get destroyers on top of everything. Oh, yeah. Up and down the ramp. <laughs> up, up and down that ramp that's level. The stairs. Yeah, that, that'll the, hurt going. The gunk, stairs, gunk, gunk, of course. Um, maybe just through something, you know, like he's standing on the top and he just goes straight down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like Brody and uh, Moxley. Exactly. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. Um, both would be a lot of fun, but I have to go with Kazuchika Okada in the WWE. Yeah, I think... He would stand out more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Abushi, you're right. May, may sort of fall into the rest of AEW's craziness, but Kazuchika Okada is something incredibly new to WWE. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Okay. Well, there you go. I like that one. Mike, I've got one more here for you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> would you rather Vince McMahon owns your wrestling name? Right, so you 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 get popular under a name in which Vince McMahon owns, mm -hmm. or halfway through your career, he names you Shorty G. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd rather him own the name <laughs> than be the Shorty G. Then be called Shorty G. Yeah, 
you know, you can still make, make a, a good, good living, living, even if he owns your name. Of course. Well, we've seen we've seen Moxley um, exemplify that. Exactly. You can change your name. You can do something. I don't know. Either way, I'll let him have it. <laughs> yeah. You'll let him have that one. I love the names that WWE makes. Something like Chad Gable, uh, which sounds like that's a, your normal name. Yeah. You know, it sounds is so it close to his real name. It sounds so normal. So I did look this one up uh, prior to writing this question because I was curious. His name is Charles Betts. B E T T S. Okay, uh, which, like, I feel like is no better or worse than Chad Gable. Uh, I think Gable's got a good ring to it. Maybe a little better. Like, who, uh, you know, is uh, it, it well, does ring the question, right? Like, how. Yeah, it's curious. <laughs> I don't know, just curious. Some of these people who are able to keep their name, those who are not. Well, it's like, and, uh, you know, Brian Danielson being Daniel Bryan. But he, but I think that's a, I'm going to assume WWE owns Daniel Bryan. No, they do, but it's just a fun, just right. a fun thing. It's, it's basically his name. Like if he, <laughs> oh, he, the way he just swapped it. But yeah, if Daniel yeah. Bryan's going on the, if he leaves WWE, he goes back to being Brian Danielson and we all, it's almost yeah. like there's no difference. Yeah, exactly. He's the same guy. Just like change the, uh, you know, change your like initials. That's really all it is. <laughs> or exactly. I guess there are people, I guess the Jericho types are the ones who must have, you know, squeaked in from before a uh, before time, right? Where, who knows? Maybe Jericho he would owned his name from the get go. You know, it was so long ago. Maybe that was something that he would have thought of. I don't know. I, don't yeah. know. I, I wonder. I wonder how all that works in terms of a uh, naming yourself. You know, AJ Styles. That's not his name, but he he. I mean, he's been called it his entire <laughs> career. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, Brian Danielson to me yeah. sounds like the made up name. Daniel Bryan sounds more real. Br- yeah, because Daniel like Bryan Danielson. Because Danielson is not a name. <laughs> no, like that's not a name. <laughs> <laughs> Bryan Danielson. Yeah, that seems like you tried to reverse engineer it, but that's the way it is. Like, is that, right. is that like a Swedish thing? Like the sun? Because it's like uh, it's two S's, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I got one final one for you. This is another personal one. This one's a little morbid. So bear, bear with yourself, yourself here. Bear with bear with your me. You're asking no, me to, okay. Because you're gonna have to <laughs> do with this punishment. Uh, yeah. So this is almost like a game of saw. Like let's say someone's captured you and you have to do one of these two things before okay. they let you go. Yep. Okay. I would I would like to play a game. If, uh, <laughs> you would like to play a game. I would like to play right. a game. <laughs> this isn't you know this you're not gonna die or anything, but this this it could hurt a lot. So here's your your first first option. option. You have to bite bite down down on a nail file as hard as you can and then have it ripped out from your mouth. (laughs) This has nothing to do with wrestling, dog. (laughs) I didn't say it. Fuck, you never did say. We never did establish those rules. Oh, my God. Okay. So that's in your mind. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That's option one. Here's option two. Uh, you take a toothpick, you stick it under your toenail, and then you kick a soccer ball as hard as you can with that foot, <laughs> with your big toe. Toothpick. Fuck off, Mike. Oh, my God. <laughs> I said it was going to be morbid. You did. You did. Um, so, the But it's not life changing. Like, you'll survive both of these. Of course, I'll survive both. Now, the teeth one, that's uncomfortable. Where the toothpick, that I think you know, there could be blood involved, right? I wouldn't see any blood coming from this. Okay. Oh my God. You know the feeling if this ever happened? You're brushing your teeth, <laughs> and then you accidentally chomp down on the toothbrush, but like on the yeah. bristles. Yeah. Oh my God. I that feeling makes me want to shit my pants and throw this up. This is a big file. This could permanently damage some teeth. Oh my God. I can feel like I can picture like my mom's coarse <laughs> nail file. <laughs> That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. The one fucking... that your mom's had in like yeah. her, the washroom for seventeen yeah. and a half years. Yeah. And it's so coarse, like the thickest grade of <laughs> of sandpaper. Oh my god! You're making it harder uh, on yourself now. You're, you're, yeah, you're 
diving in on. So the other week, um, I was up north, and it was raining a bunch. And I wasn't wearing shoes, and my, my, my feet got really waterlogged, right? And my nails got really waterlogged also. And actually, my yeah, you know, like most people, I have a shitty-looking pinky toenail. And it actually just flat out, like, fell off. <laughs> it's it's yeah. a little thing, you know. Yeah. It's no larger than like a you know like a pin, <laughs> and it just kind of fell off. And I was you know touching the little bit of skin underneath it, and I was like, oh okay, this isn't that bad. I pictured it being like gooey and soft, <laughs> right? It was actually fairly normal, which leads me well, to for this you got to do the big toe. toe, which leads me to believe that the skin under my big toe would probably be the same. It probably hurt more though. <laughs> I gotta go. I think I gotta go toothpick. I think I have to go toothpick. I think the feeling. I don't like mouth feelings. I think I could rather do deal with the pain of the toothpick than yeah. the feeling. Your nail in will my grow mouth. back. Yeah, yeah the, the nail, nail will, will grow, grow back, back. But if you damage your teeth, that enamel, it's the it's gone. gone. Oh, anything so. like that. Yeah, anytime. If yeah, if I chomp down on the side of your on your toothbrush bristles, if you ever bite down on a fork, you know, because you forget how to eat for a second. <laughs> Um, yeah. anything like that just make oh, it just makes me tingle. Well, there you go. In yeah, a bad I think way. I'd take the toothpick as well. You'd, you'd heal. heal. It would hurt a lot, but you'd heal. You'd be you'd survive. God, God, that. But you're free. free. You, you escaped. escaped. I escaped the saw. No, there's always a catch. <laughs> Nobody ever escapes that saw maze unscathed. Well, until the next, would you rather? Until, until the next. Would until you the rather next challenge. Escape. I guess the woman. Uh, what's well, her she name? Had to, Amanda. Like, take over. Yeah, but she like unfort she survived, but then unfortunately got sucked in. <laughs> got sucked yeah. in. Nobody has truly just walked away, uh, like harm free. Yet. Yet. Yet we will see. Of course, uh, keep an eye out for what's it called? It's like uh, a two syllable eight. word. Yeah. <laughs> but the, but it's called something. It's got a subtitle. Yeah, it's got a uh, no, not a spiral. It's not called. It's not called uh, like Saw Eight. It's just called Spiral. Saw Spiral, spiral or just Spiral? Just Spiral. Oh, yeah, but it's yeah, part yeah. Of the, it's it's it's, it's a, a sequel, sequel still, still or like it a is, real? Yeah, it, it is the ninth installment of the franchise. Yeah, it's called Spiral from the Book of Saw. So, so it's, it's not, not like, like a reboot, reboot or, anything or anything like that. Not a reboot. Well, we 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 don't know any details. Know. There is a there is a brief trailer. It's uh it's starring Samuel L. Jackson and Chris Rock. Um, what? If I you didn't have see that. Yeah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to check the trailer. Oh hell! I mean, I was gonna watch the saw anyways. But. Of course, you were gonna watch it anyways. Yeah, no, and they've. Uh, I think Chris Rock is also tied in on a producer on it. Um, no, this was actually I did hear about the Chris Rock part. I remember the producer thing, but yeah, this was a thing. Apparently, he's just a huge. He really likes the franchise. He always he has. He's gone. And I think uh, Saw was kind of done after the events of Jigsaw, and he's like, "Would you mind if I uh, <laughs> came to the helm?" And they're like, "Sure, Chris Rock." <laughs> I like it. Yeah, so we have to check that out. It was supposed to. It was supposed to be out already, but it is one of the movies that has been kind of pushed back till 2021, I believe. Yeah, like, like everything. everything. Yeah, yeah, like a lot of those other movies. Well, that was fantastic, Mike. That was another week of Would You Rather. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> always, always, always fun, fun to play our little games in the middle. Always fun to play our little games in the middle. But, you know, we're only a couple weeks away from SummerSlam, so there is no more time for games. we got to start getting serious. We have some title bouts to deal with. Um, hopefully that we don't have any more production mistakes uh, because um, this is America's longest running show, maybe I don't actually know. Well, longest America's running weekly, longest running weekly episodic episodic show. <laughs> There's no time to fuck around on Monday Night Raw. Let's get raw. Let's get raw. No said time. It. I almost said Monday Night Live. I got oh. so close. I almost <laughs> had to stop myself. I think it's a Monday Night fo but and like I don't know why like Monday Night Football comes in my mind too when I'm trying to say Monday Night Raw. I mean, it's live most of the time, Raw. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I guess that's the best part. We don't know what's live and what's not anymore. It's really added this, this era, other yeah. other element of who I wonder if they are legally obligated cuz anytime, anytime when they're not live, live they, they take, take away the logo from the corner of the screen where it says live. Oh really? I'd I'd wonder like during about the pay per view, like during the swamp match, it wasn't there. But then during the women's title match, it was there. 
Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. But I don't know. Huh. I they do. could lie. I don't know. Are they I do wonder. I, I have heard through other, you know, I have heard around that, yeah, shows like Raw, SmackDown, NXT, like they have to put on two hours every week. Yeah, like, like two hours of new stuff for. every week. Yeah, the network is like, that's part of the deal. But I wonder, explicitly saying if it's Raw, um, who the hell knows. Uh, however, we are going to kick off this episode of Monday Night Raw with Samoa Joe. He's in the middle of the ring, um, ready to negotiate a contract signing. Uh, well, there's a couple contracts to be signed. Yeah, um, double contracts. Double contracts to be signed. Not only are we signing our official contracts for um, Seth Rollins and Dominic Mysterio to have their uh, match at SummerSlam, but Dominic also needs to sign his I'm a Superstar Now yeah, contract. It's legit. He's official. He's going to be on that website. He skipped WWE. right over NXT. Yeah. Well. Right over Evolve and w- straight to. <laughs> right over Evolve. <laughs> straight to that- SummerSlam, baby. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, pick a fight with a main roster guy, and that's how you do it. Have I guess that's how you gouge your dad's you eye out. None of this working your way up thing. Just talk shit about someone on Monday Night Raw. It'll, it'll happen. And did you notice uh, Dominic had his own entrance music when he came out? I did. I okay. I I'm glad I, you noticed that too, because I also because I also did. I was curious. <laughs> so I was curious. Yeah. What he the was graphics going were to pretty get. simple. Yeah, just the Dominic Mysterio like Dominic. in br- that bright like neon change. font. Yeah, and and sort of like uh, the same colors that Rey Mysterio has when his, yeah his face and is the flashing. music, the music was kind of like a remix of Rey's. It had a couple Booyaka six one nines in there, I think. Yeah, which is great. Well, I mean, Dominic's already done the six one nine a couple times. It's probably going to be a yeah. part of his move set. Yeah, and uh, he's got the kendo stick with him as well, which seems to be part of his his gimmick. It's like the old WCW N64 games when guys would just come to the ring with a weapon. Oh, and just show up. There was no DQs. They didn't have the games yet. Yeah. WCW had no DQs. Well, the game didn't. They just didn't have it in the game. Oh, it just just wasn't a function. Whatever the fuck you wanted. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But anyways, he's got the stick. Seth calls him a coward, scared little boy. But Samoa Joe's like, "Yeah, you're right. This is safer with me." And he takes the stick. So uh, yeah, Rollins is mad, but I don't know. Uh, eventually, eventually they're all just chirping, chirping each other back and forth. forth. Dominic, Dominic chimes in, calls Rollins a little selfish piece of shit, and it's my dream to kick your ass at SummerSlam. So Rollins says, all right, I'll do you a favor. At SummerSlam, you can bring the candlestick, and you can use it or anything else. So you'll have no excuse when I end your career. Possibly so a leading a to a, uh, yeah, some kind of extreme rules, no DQ type of step. Yeah, yeah they didn't. They didn't specify, but he laid it out there. So we'll or maybe see. kendo stick on a pole. Maybe Hopefully I've not. been saying it for years, Mike. <laughs> we need the kendo stick. What's more, what's the most dangerous weapon uh, under that ring? It's a kendo stick. Well, this week it was one of them, but anyway, it's Dominic. He signs both his contracts. It's on. The match is set. But uh, before that, Seth Rollins is going to take on Umberto Carrillo. Uh, Dominic's just watching outside the ring, but. I don't know. Seth, Seth gets the news. Seth, Seth gets the win. win. Curb stop combo. And then Rollins and Murphy try to beat down Dominic, but he fights back for a bit. Uh, but then Seth grabs the kendo stick and just beats the shit out of him. They tie him up on the ropes so he's defenseless, and they just both beat back and forth, front and back, kendo stick shots all over the place. He was bloody. He was welted. Oh, he was messed up. <laughs> yeah, those, oh, those were some stiff shots there. They kicked the shit out of him. Yeah, we got to see all his tats, too. Yes. Yeah, tats. yeah, yeah. No, no, he's uh <laughs> he's tattooed up for uh for he's a youngster. Some. Um this was fantastic though. You know what? This was uh I may have counted uh, without the commercial break, you know, without commercial time. This was like 26 minutes. Oh, yeah, from was... from the get-go, of course, Samoa Joe should be um, you know, m- mediating or you know, moderating every single contract signing. Yeah, because he can actually fucking, fucking do something. something. Because he can actually be involved and do something that's important. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, setting the match. What you know, we we will have a stip kind of assigned to us. Seth Rollins was doing some great work, uh, uh, yelling to the camera. I don't know if you yeah. caught that of him yelling like, "Hey, what's up, Papa Ray? <laughs> hey, Papa Ray!" <laughs> it's a great, great, great beat down. down. Those, Those welts. welts. 
Yeah, he's, he's going to feel that for a couple days. He might even still be there by SummerSlam. Slam. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Well, hopefully we'll see. I guess our, I guess the next question on our mind is Dominic's ring gear. What will it be? Because yeah. he is not only taller than his father, but also you know a little bit stockier than his father. Was he going to go for the the full kind of tight sleeveless bodysuit? Um, yeah, I what's don't know. it Long going pants, to be? Shorts. Long pants, shorts. Long pants, shorts. Kevin Owens look. Shirt, no shirt. Uh, <laughs> real. It's 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 such an it's an important question before you make your debut, and it's something that I'm sure the costume and wardrobe uh, department is uh, working round the clock. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure, figure that out. Yeah. But, but uh, the Zelina and the, and the Vega Bonds, they come out. Vega cuts a promo. She's, she's all pissed, pissed off about being accused of poisoning Montez, Montez Ford last, last week. She, she claims innocence, innocence and, uh, you know, she, she doesn't want to ruin, ruin that tag title opportunity for her clients. And, and she especially doesn't appreciate Bianca Belair putting her hands on her. But then uh, Angelo Dawkins comes out because he's got to fight Andrade. And uh, yeah, I think Ford was absent this week, just selling that poison. Because he, well, he was poisoned last week, so of course he's not going to come back immediately this <laughs> week. I don't know if you saw. Uh, this was a, a little video I saw a, a, outside of the fact uh, Bianca Belair attacking Zelina Vega um, live on a Twitch stream. Oh yeah, I did see, or I did hear about that. Uh, yeah, it did happen. Uh, Zelina Vegas just doing whatever kind of Twitch thing she normally does, and then uh, just kind of coming, just like from so off that, camera, just that, gets uh, fucking oh. swiped out. <laughs> yeah, and then beat down. Home invasion. Something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, Crimes? we already know Al- Alistair Black is presumably bedridden um, <laughs> after the <laughs> after the last breakdown that we saw. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, yeah, Dawkins, he's facing Andrade. Uh, Andrade, Andrade jumps off the ropes, ropes Dawkins avoids it, hits a big right hand, hand but, but then Zelina, Zelina Vega jumps on the apron to distract the ref, uh, but then Bianca Belair rips, rips her down, down, beats her up, and then Dawkins, Dawkins hits his cash out spine buster, gets the win. Gets the win after uh, a little distraction, kind of, you know, a little back and forth there too. A little back and forth, and it leads us right into it. Bianca Belair taking on Zelina Vega, and yeah, Belair looks good, it's always nice to see Vega wrestle. Mm-hmm. Uh, she doesn't, you know, she can go. They don't use her enough. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing. Uh, like, she's far more competent overall than a lot of the other women on the roster in terms of being, you know, she's yeah. she's leading she's a smooth. stable every single Monday, and she does yeah. have the ability to back it up. Yeah, yeah. great on the mic, smooth, smooth in the ring, ring and, and she's light, light enough, enough so that uh, uh, Bel Air can do, like, the giant, giant military press, 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 push her right above her head. head. Looking impressive, but uh, Lena's feisty. She puts up a good fight, but you know, Belair, strongest, fastest, bestest, everything. She hits the KOD, which I finally learned stands for kiss of death to get the three. To get the three count. One thing that I got to say um, is nice. It's uh, So we went from the Bianca Belair to our and Ruby to then <laughs> kicking her out yeah they forgot from all about Ruby. that but uh you know we have forgotten all about it because we've put Bianca Belair where she need or where she should be yeah, yeah at, least at least for now, now have her hang around the street profits and of course right like her partnership with Ruby just didn't make any sense no, no. Yeah, yeah it was just out, out of nowhere, nowhere and it only, it only lasted, lasted a week, week so, so. <laughs> yeah but, but uh, I think afterwards we get a quick update. Charlie asks Dawkins, Dawkins and Bel Air about Ford, Ford, and they say he's not, not going to miss SummerSlam. So they found the elixir. So we will have that match on SummerSlam then. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Pre-show, pre-show, maybe. I don't know. Oh, got pre-show written all over it, baby. <laughs> pre-show, yeah. Uh, but then MVP and the Hurt Business in the ring for a little VIP lounge. MVP just talks about the conspiracy going on with all these malfunctions happening during his match last week. Apollo didn't beat me. The lights beat me. So Apollo comes out. I think he had a new entrance theme. I couldn't tell. Oh, I, I yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know what at least it at the was beginning in the first place. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyways, he cuts a little promo about MVP making excuses. He mocks him for yeah making him pay for the new title, and he's gonna beat his ass more at SummerSlam. So uh, and then he attacks them and throws his couch to the floor. Yeah, and like just a th- uh, chucks a couch, Mike. Chucks I don't know if you've couch. ever tried to throw a couch. It's way more <laughs> difficult than Apollo Crews made it look. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it depends on the couch. <laughs> but for the most part, depends on the couch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was a that was a feat of strength, and luckily, uh, no one no one got hurt by that couch. Amen. 
Uh, uh, but we do get a match here. here. Apollo Crews take on Shelton, Shelton Benjamin. Benjamin. I almost said Creed because that Rocky theme's in my head still. <laughs> but Apollo Crews taking on Shelton Benjamin. Just a good little athletic wrestling match here. Two big men that can flip around and do some fun shit. But uh, Eventually, Apollo's in control. He hits the ropes. Lashley tries to trip him up, and that distracts him enough for Shelton to just hit him and roll him up for three count. The old roll up three account, mm. the uh, possibly the most dangerous maneuver in professional wrestling. Yeah, yeah when they get you from behind, you oh, never know. You never know what's going to happen. You, you know, know, sometimes, sometimes I go up to my dog, dog and I just roll him up in him. He tries to kick, kick out. out. I see if I can get Oh, him. no, he can't kick out of that. He can't kick out of he that. Tries, he, <laughs> oh, tries. he tries, though. He tries. You know how a lot of times when, you know, they're, they're pinning the wrestler, they're, they're wiggling, wiggling, they're kicking, they're trying to kick out. Of course, of course, that like comical leg wiggle the reaction, like, in the air. Yeah. The Miz but you're is fighting. The Miz is the best <laughs> at taking a uh, a quick roll up. Like remember the other yeah. week when uh, <laughs> I guess I don't know if it was it, it, it was Santana or Ortiz slipping around in that orange juice. Oh, yeah. The Miz will do that <laughs> while he's being rolled up. Uh, yeah. Got to say he's one of the best in the business. Makes, Makes it, look it look dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> Makes the pen look <laughs> Uh, but anyways, we cut to the parking lot where Retribution's causing more trouble. They're tossing cinder blocks through windows. Now this, That's now this <laughs> was where uh, the female aspect, uh, or you know, I believe Retribution at least has women in uh, as a part of their stable. This was where I caught it too because a lot of their cheering and shrieks were just uh -huh. a higher register than that that a man could produce. It also sounded like, Mike, and I may be crazy on this one, I may be hearing things, it sounded like a woman trying to speak with a low voice. <laughs> like, you know when you're trying to speak with a low voice, yeah. and it clear, this yeah. clearly does not sound... Like, it, sound, it sounded like somebody trying to... Well, like uh, like when a couple's arguing, arguing and the woman's making fun like of that? Man, Yeah, oh, like, do, oh, do, do. <laughs> yeah, like that. But then, then the man then comes the man back goes, with the... <laughs> And when uh, you do the hand thing, they get really mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you play out the hand gestures and oh, all of yeah. it. Uh, if you, if you, I'm sure this <laughs> clip is somewhere on WWE.com on one of their socials or something. But you may be, I might be crazy. I do not know. Uh, <laughs> no, so, so uh, uh, any suspicion of who that woman was? Of who was they were? Uh, who's the best at shrieking? I don't know. Well, well Shotzi's Shotzi got, got a good. Oh, oh, oh. She's got a good thing. Um, <clears throat> you know but what? We do not. see we do see Lana a little later on, so I'm going to excuse her from the retribution shriek. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think um, uh, right now my mind is going that this is possibly an all female stable, um, who are ups who are upset and they're they've had enough of title opportunities being presented to the same women. <laughs> um, it's been it's been a while since we've seen the uh, you know I mean it's not since the karaoke contest that we've seen a few of those women that were involved. We had Naomi, Lacey Evans, Dana Brooke. Uh, there are a lot of women on these rosters who aren't in any picture. I mean, three women <coughs> hold all or hold the three belts. Um, uh, uh, I don't, I don't think, think it's, it's an all woman group. group. Okay, myself. you think. Okay, you think it may, but you think it would be mi mixed. But gender? I think there's definitely some women involved, okay. uh, and that are yeah, yeah making a big splash. splash. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean a woman can't, can't be a leader of the group or anything, or anything like, like that. that. Oh no, not no, not at all, not at all. But um, yeah, I think this is where we may be going. Um, people who are upset with, uh, or you know, uh, that's, that's what's going on in my mind. Women who are yeah. upset, the opportunities go to the same performers. Well, well, we'll, we'll, we'll have, have to follow this, this but we'll see. Uh, Sarah, Sarah Schreiber backstage, backstage is interviewing the returning Mickey James, James, who is then interrupted, of course, by Lana, Lana and Natalia, Natalia, as you said earlier. And they got, they got their, their matching, matching dresses, dresses on. on. I don't, I don't know, know if they're just friends now. I guess they're they're um. Well, you know, I mean, how do you build uh, a new tag team? Have them wear the same clothes, people. This is Tag <laughs> Team 101. Uh, so Lana and Natalia, maybe that's what it is. Lana Natalia. Lana Natalia. Natalana. Lana Natalia. Yeah, we'll get there. It's something. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyways, anyways tag, tag Team Action. action uh, the, Viking the Viking Raiders are teaming up with Ricochet, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander, Alexander to take on Tazawa and his ninjas. ninjas. But, but the ninjas, ninjas just kind of get beat down, down easily, so... 
Tazawa, Tazawa and one of the other ninjas, they, they just slink, slink out of there before the match can end. end. Uh, the and Viking the Viking Raiders had a massive, massive Viking, Viking experience on one of the ninjas in the ring. Yeah, I don't know who's jobbing out out there, but uh, they <laughs> jobbed the fuck out. That was a huge, yeah. Big. So he got he fucked up. up. Uh, then Tazawa and the other ninja are sneaking up the ramp. But uh, the ninja calls down a ref, rolls up Tazawa, wins a 24-7 title. And of course, takes off the mask to reveal it's our truth. The 38 time 24-7 The 38 time 27-11, uh, 24-7-11 champion. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, there you go. There you That's go. That. <laughs> Liv Morgan taking on Peyton Royce. Liv's looking good, super aggressive, but uh, Billy Kay jumps on the apron. So Ruby jumps up as well to scare her off, but the ref sees Ruby. And this distraction allows Peyton to hit that nice twisting brain buster, the deja vu, to get the win. Any time, or at least the past few weeks, or maybe this has been going back years, it's hard to tell. Why can't these four women get enough time? It seems like any time we see Riot Squad, Iconics, whether they're interacting or, you know, whether individuals from those teams are interacting, it's like, guys, you get six minutes of television, and then that's fucking it. We yeah, we got we got to fit our entrances. We got to fit a quick promo, and play out the actual match. Well, I wish I, I wish I knew I, I could use more, more of all of them. I don't know how like how like I mean I guess it raises the question: Can you get over in less than five minutes? Is that po is that <laughs> possible? Could could the strongest of performers? You know, maybe or maybe maybe not. You know, the, the top of the echelon. You know, but if you're not over, how do you do that in five minutes? Well, well, I think our truth he's, he's usually pretty over with anything <laughs> he's the, he does. He's the five-minute king. Good or, Good or bad, bad, yeah. People, people pop for him. him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but you know what? what? Let's, Let's go, go underground. underground. We, got we got Raw, Raw underground, underground, and Riddick, Riddick Moss, Moss is here. here. Well, right before we started Raw Underground, I do have to say, um, Shane McMahon did his little, he was waiting outside the door, and he goes in the door, the door opens, there's a bunch of smoke that comes out the door, or like like a smoke machine is back there. For some, I guess it's really hot and sweaty down there. I don't know what it is, but the the security guard standing there, I believe, is the same security guard, or sorry, the same uh, performance center recruit who was the large ninja at was it? Um, whatever pay per view was the last one that I'm thinking of. Yeah, so uh, is that Extreme where they got rid of him? I'm not sure, cool. but like I don't. At least I just wonder how many like seven foot four people are working over there at <laughs> WWE. I gotta say, it must, it's gotta be the same one. Must be. This guy's I mean, fucking huge. Who is this person? I don't know. I, I thought they, they would put, put him in the ring, ring if they're gonna use him. But you would uh, think, right? I don't know. Anyways, Raw Underground, underground Riddick, Riddick Moss taking on Kyle, Kyle Bloomis. And they, they, they fight, fight outside, outside the, the ring. ring. They're slamming, slamming into the walls. But eventually, eventually Moss hits a big right hand and just follows up with blows. blows so the ref has to stop it. it. Moss win. Yeah, I guess this is this is the place for Riddick Moss too, right? I mean... <laughs> yeah, 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 we haven't really <laughs> seen him since he had that 24-7 title reign. You know, and, and he just started with uh, uh, an incredibly long 24-7 title reign. Yeah, the second, second longest ever. ever think, <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, Asuka's in the ring, taking on Bailey, and if Asuka wins, she will face Sasha Banks for the title at SummerSlam. And you know, they have a good match, we get more power failures, lights flickering, uh, Sasha interferes behind the ref's back whenever she can, but, uh, Bailey's in control, and she starts mocking Kyrie Sane, doing a little pirate march, but then Asuka comes flying in with this armbar, transitions to the Asuka lock, and Bailey taps out. Yeah, so that, 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 that was a damn fine uh, finishing sequence there. Yeah, yeah that was really cool. Um, and yeah, yeah so Asuka Sasha. Sasha. It's going to be another fun match. Asuka Sasha. I mean, and, and this, even this Asuka Bailey was uh, fantastic. You know, uh, ba you know, Bailey's been quite protected over the last year. You know, she's been dominant as champion. But I feel as though Asuka is, is, is coming off way more strong. Yeah, oh yeah, but Asuka's right up there. She's been one of the most dominant women this year as well. Yeah, no, it's uh, it, it and it's great to see the, the, finally coming together, right? Finally, yeah. what we've been working on all this time. Yeah, SummerSlam, you know, that could be the end of all the gold. Who knows? Oh, only time will tell. We'll see. But let's go back to Raw Underground, where we got uh, Arturo Ruas, 17-time amateur wrestling champion of Brazil, 
Uh, he faces some lame, nameless dude, so, you know, he makes quick work of him, uh, knocks him out. And then Daba Kato's back for another go around, and he destroys some little guy. He even squeezes him by the balls at one point. Yeah, it was a little weird. It's a little weird. I didn't no know rules. that was allowed in uh, Raw Underground, but uh, apparently this is Shane McMahon's uh, thing, <laughs> so he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, so he wins, and then Shayna Baszler comes storming in. She gets in the ring, puts in her mouth guard, but no one comes in to challenge, so she says, fuck it. She gets she outside gets of the ring, just starts grabbing, grabbing some women, some women beating them, them down. down. So the other ones jump in, try to help, but she beats up all three of them at once, and uh, yeah, just makes them tap out. Another great place for Shayna Baszler, of course. You know, the underground, the fight pit. Uh, yeah. These are the types of things that uh, she should be doing. Yeah, that suits her. I don't know if those uh, were those the strippers this week. They jumped down into the crowd and got attacked. Yeah, I think. Uh, not th strippers, side <laughs> dancers. They dance for tips. They work for tips. There is <laughs> sufficient security. Nobody. Did they show is the dancers this week. Uh, I didn't get. I didn't. I didn't catch them. I also didn't yeah. catch the uh, softcore porn music that they had last week. <laughs> so I think uh, they've changed around a couple elements of the production. Yeah. Well. Two weeks in a row. I think we'll get at least one more week of Raw Underground. We'll see. Well, yeah. I mean, in rules of three, right? Rules of three. That's the, uh, you know, that's the rule. That's the yeah. improv rule. When two people well, die, you know, a third one's coming. That's what they say. Two bad things happen. A third bad thing's probably going to happen. <laughs> well, bad things happen when Retribution's around because we cut to the parking lot where they've flipped a car over. And damaged it. No, 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 Mike. I gotta, I gotta stop you right there. I need to rephrase you. They didn't flip over the car. The camera cuts in to a flipped over car. No, they did it. And they're just sort of kicking it. <laughs> they did it. They did it. Though. Oh, they, they did it. And it's like, oh, okay, they did it. But uh, they didn't want to be caught on camera. We just didn't catch. We didn't catch them doing it. What we have here is them kicking it. I thought they were gonna light it on fire. That would have been cool. Oh. I would have maybe that maybe that would have been a bit much. Who knows. I mean, maybe, but maybe not. It would have been cool. Uh, let's go to the main event. Randy Orton's taking on Kevin Owens in the ring. and Yeah, they gave him lots of time here. Ric Flair's on the outside cheering for Orton. And Orton's looking good. He's in control. Oh, no, sorry. Owens is in control. He goes for the stunner. But then Orton just blocks it, hits the RKO, gets the win. And then afterwards, Orton and Flair, they're celebrating. Flair goes to leave, but Orton grabs a mic and says, wait a minute, stay here. And he just cuts a promo on Flair and uh, talks about being the son he wished he had. Kind of cutting into Flair about his dead son. Yeah, why? What's up with them with pulling all, <laughs> like... This is like nothing, what you mentioned earlier. Just like what I mentioned earlier. Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure Flair, he's like, yeah, let's go there. So they go there and he just continu continues insulting Flair. He's turning on him, calling him a whore for the spotlight, washed up. And then Flair just gives a, an impassioned response, you know, saying, you're right. And he puts him over. He wants you, Randy Orton, to be the one to beat his record, become a 17-time world champ. And he gets emotional talking about being in a coma, almost dying, and how it made him want to tell those close to him that he loved them. He's pouring his heart out. And then Randy just grabs the mic, tosses it away, pulls him in for a hug, but then turns around and boom, hits him with the low blow. And, of course, he follows up with the big running head punt. But right as he makes contact, the lights go out. To, uh, I guess save us from the horror and maybe the bump. I love that. <laughs> I really – no, no, no. I, 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 I honestly did. Uh, this is a non-sarcasm thing. Sometimes – you know, like when you're watching a movie and it's the things you don't see that lets your mind yeah. – fill the gap in like i don't need to see a 75 year old man get hit in the head to picture what a 75 year old getting punched into the head would look like yeah well this was fine for me so yeah it was good i, I said this a few weeks ago this is ending with flair getting punted in the head you did you did and uh, so he's out cold drew mcintyre runs out to check on flair chase randy off and the officials come out to help the show just ends with pissed off McIntyre and Orton staring each other down. Staring grimacing. him down with a, he looks like a fucking demon. He's grimacing. Staring yeah. him down. Um, <laughs> this was a fantastic main event. I think Asuka, Asuka Bailey this, had the better match. But, yeah, but this segment. This we're seeing segment. Randy Orton and Mike, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta tell me the long term scope of this. Possibly working at the highest level of his career. 
yeah, this is definitely, uh, yeah, this could be at the top. And, and Ric Flair <laughs> delivering one hell of a promo. One hell of probably it was like a twenty six and a half minute long promo. They cut it down <laughs> uh, to like a, a like twenty five seconds of digestible television. Um, I have to say though, um, I Rand, Randy Orton's leaving SummerSlam as the WWE champion. I can't think he's working. Too, he's working too hard right now. Yeah, I think he should. I, I think, think he, he she deserves this. And then there's a ready-made world title match whenever oh Edge God, is ready to Mike, return. Oh, my God, I knew you. Don't say it. Don't <laughs> say it. Don't get me excited. That's still, we don't know. We don't, oh yeah, But uh, Randy Orton, he's gunning for that 17-time world champ. He's gunning. This would this he's be gunning. number 15, I think. So he'd be one behind Cena on this one. One behind Cena and Flair okay. for the tie, the three-way tie. And the way that Randy Orton is performing, he deserves it. Uh, this feud continues to be, I mean, I mean, this the women's title scene is sort of everywhere on both shows. It's sort of hard to pin it down to a show, but this is, I got to say my favorite angle on raw right now. Best thing going. There's some good Good storylines going on raw. Yeah. Between this this and the uh, Seth Seth Dominic Dominic Ray, Ray, there's some, some good serious promos and action going on. There's some serious things going on leading towards SummerSlam. And I got to say, you know, throughout all of these audience list shows, now we're doing it. We've hit our stride. WWE has figured it out. The fans at home have figured out how to enjoy it, how to digest it. And uh, we're all loving it. We're all loving it. We are loving it. And And that that was was, (laughs) Monday Night Raw. Raw. And that was Monday Night Raw. (laughs) And that's the show. Yeah, there's one one other other quick thing thing I want to get to here. Okay. Just because you got to mention it because the women's deadly draw tournament is going on for AEW. It's still going on on YouTube. On YouTube. That is correct. I might as well just tell you. Uh, Because Big Swole teamed up with Lil Swole. There's a Lil Swole? Apparently. She's not that little. They're like the same same height. (laughs) Uh, But anyway, so they team up against Leva Bates and Russia Chanel. And Big Swole, they'll Swole win. So they'll fight, they'll fight the Nightmare Sisters in the semifinals. Okay, then, well, there uh, we go. Semifinals on that side of the bracket. And what's going on, on the other side? Then on the other side, uh, the final draw, backstage interviewer Dasha is told she's going to be in the thing. So uh, Dasha Fuentes? Yeah, so I guess the AEW women's roster really is that small. But anyway, <laughs> she picks her chip, and uh, she'll be joined by daughter of the Hall of Famer, Rachel L. Ring. Uh, but, uh, but they lost to the team of Diamante, Diamante and Ivelisse. So a cool little match. Oh, I thought I recognized that last name. Uh, Paul L. Ring's. Yeah, yeah, Paul L. Ring's daughter. Daughter, Rachel niece, something like something. that probably? Maybe granddaughter. Huh. <laughs> but uh, they lost, yeah, Diamante, Ivelisse, the fresh new cool looking team will face Tay Conti and Anna Jay in the semifinals. Oh, there we go. So hopefully, hopefully they'll put the, the finals, finals on TV because yeah yeah I you wonder would, you wouldn't even know they'll have you, you have to I mean if there's a if there's a trophy being presented that you can't pre- you know take up a yeah. little bit of time on television to present I hope a trophy because so. yeah they haven't even really mentioned the tournament much I thought, I thought it was going to take place on dynamite we, that's what we thought this whole time We're like finally like some more women's action on TV no yeah. too bad, bad. Too, too bad, bad. but, but wanted to get that in but, but yes. Yeah. Now I guess there it is, everything but the final thing to take care of, which we always do. The Wrestler of the Week. It's the Wrestler of the Week of the Week. The Wrestler of the Week of the Week of the Week. The Wrestler of the Week of the Week of the Week. The Wrestler of the Week of the Week of the Week. It is, it, it is the last bit of business that we do have to take care of, Mike, of course. Um, I'm going to kick off with you here. You know, it was a little bit of a shorter week than we usually deal with. Um, we didn't even have uh, NXT or um, 
uh, by the way, I was looking back on my wrestler of the weeks over the past little while. Um, Edge at Backlash was the last time I, uh, one of my wrestlers of the week was from one of the main rosters, which was pretty funny. Oh. Uh, I've been dealing <laughs> off in other shows, so now we really got to focus on SmackDown and Raw, specifically on Raw, and I got to give my wrestler of the week. Um, welcome to the fucking club. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the club. Um, there's, you know, I mean, over the course of history, many groups have had various sorts of initiations before you're able to enter the group. You know, walk on hot coals, or maybe you're, you know, they slap something across your back or sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> that welcoming committee might just be a kendo stick whacked against your upper body for like three and a half minutes at, on, at 8.30 on a Monday night. Uh, and for that reason, Dominic Mysterio, you're my wrestler of the week. Yeah, very well deserved. He did take that hell of a beating. Hell Delicious. of a beating. He took it uh, like he's been doing this his whole life. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with the same show, same roster, uh, but possibly one of the oldest to ever win wrestler of the week. I'm going to give it to Ric Flair. I liked, I liked his promo a lot there. It's some great emotion and just further... The story of Randy Orton being the worst person in the world. Being the worst person <laughs> in all of professional wrestling and the planet. And you're right, Ric Flair uh, giving one of, it got to be one of those better promos. And Because anytime we see him, it's never serious. Yeah. yeah. There's always some kind of serious. goofing around element or him talking. You bring up a dead, dead family family member, you're getting serious. serious. Yeah, we're not talking to Hogan about who's a bigger draw. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> that oh, was man. one of the. That was one of the better. That, that was, was such rambling. a great show. I hate. Yeah. I hate. I remember seeing, our first split seconds? Like, are they trying to book a match, match right now? I hate <laughs> seeing Hulk Hogan. Love seeing yeah. uh, Ric Flair talk nonsense about everything. Yeah. yeah. And there you have it. And there you have it. That was the entirety of this week's Shoot Brothers Wrestling Podcast. We'll be back at our probably normal-ish time next week, and we will have a couple weeks of Dynamite to cover. Um, and, of course, it will probably be our go-home show before SummerSlam. Yeah, take over SummerSlam. We'll see. A lot to happen. So much going on this week. I can't wait for the entire show. Remember, folks, remember to rate, review, like, and subscribe because the podcast is everywhere. You know, we're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on Google Play, YouTube. Uh, so really, what's the excuse? Not none. Okay, Mike, that's all the time that we have this week. Folks, you stay safe out there. Mike, we'll talk to you later. See ya. Okay, bye. <laughs>